in like maybe the late 60s, we had a slip and slide. Mm-hmm. And we told her, go standing up. And uh, she took off and went standing up and, and her feet went out from under her. And she hit her fucking head and knocked herself out. And you know, like when nobody's driving the car, it just goes kind of fades <laughs> off. And she, she landed on her head and, and the water took her, but it took her like, and it spun her around. Like, you know, she just fucking ended up like, like a, uh, a car that had run out of gas and just turned. It was so funny because she spun. You know, she fucking knocked out and she just spun around like that. And I don't know if we were laughing harder because she hit her fucking head or then she just came to a rest. Like, you know, oh, fucking <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I got to go to that dry cleaner here by Kid Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. The NFL playoff picture is locked in, and my go-to place for wild card round action is DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code OMGHI. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get $200 in free sports bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code OMGHI. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Are you looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year? Cut back on expensive takeout, that's me, and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and how affordable it is to whip up a restaurant-quality meal right in your own kitchen. Go to HelloFresh.com slash OMGHI21 and use code OMGHI21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash OMGHI21 and use code OMGHI21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh America is number one meal kit. I must have had at least a half dozen calls on that case where the four girls or the four students were killed yeah. up in Moscow, Idaho, and to do podcasts. Asking I saw you. Opinion. And and uh, what well, was like this motherfucker all fucking cavalier and shit? No, you <laughs> big words, no, not laugh. I was like, fuck this guy. <laughs> it's like seeing your fucking old lady with some dude dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking bitch does a thing. Her legs hurt. And, and the last one I got, they wanted me to go on uh, a podcast to say to talk about everything they were doing wrong in the case. And they I asked you about me. No, and I said no. But, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Fucking get some because questions. even in the the one that I did, if you saw it, that was I said, you know. It's that initial crime scene that if you're not used to, it really it, it hard to make up. But now they had state, federal, and other county officials working it with them. And I said, they'll solve it. It just takes time as long as it wasn't that screwed up. Because I, I had no idea what they found in the crime scene. Is it? Is it? They said they had them from the beginning, from day one. They found stuff in there. Like, you know, they found DNA. Um, and then... You know, I watch a lot of YouTube, and there's a lot of thousands, I don't say not thousands, but tens of accounts of of people who who have, have followings. There's one dude, Circus Crime. He dressed up like a little clown, like with two spiders under his eyes, like a white face. <laughs> and uh, we should try to have those some of those dudes on. And, and and this dude just started, right? But but he's very honest in his delivery. I mean, he's wearing makeup. It's like you know, but but his his delivery is. Is such that it gets to the information, you know. If that's what you, if that's what you, you, that's, if that's what you're doing, and then there's some where the girls are like, "Welcome to my channel, my, well, you know," and you're just like, "Next." And then some dude does it. He's like, "Welcome to my channel today." You're just like, you know, that's from not knowing how to present yourself. I would say that. not criticism of them, but but you can't talk crime and be like, "Hey." Uh, everyone, well, you know, you gotta that, didn't, that way. The way police come up to somebody, you want to deal with facts. There's guys that I'm sure right. they make sense, I, and I'm I'm into that because there's not enough of it, 
and some of them are some of them are really good, but different than this, different than you would find on Dateline per se. But everybody, but everybody's a fucking uh, sleuth. Yeah, and, and and then you're weeding out guys that it's like anything, you know. It's like it becomes a popularity contest, of course, because if you're a little bit more factual but drab in the communication, some dude that has a white face with two spiders under his eyes and just gives it to you straight. You kind of you kind of take it, or a lot of live chats. There are a lot of lucky guesses, and once they get a lucky guess, you know, a lot of people speculate, and then they get a lucky guess, a lot of speculation, and then all of a sudden, see, I told you. But you know what's wrong? You know what I think is is fundamentally wrong in this society, but in, in everything is that the dude's guilty and not innocent. Like we used to come from a place where you were innocent until, until proven, proven guilty. guilty, and now. There's just so much that people create. Oh you yeah, know? I, I, the the first thing I told my wife, she said, "Oh good, it's over." I said, "No, it's not over." Mm. I said, "This is just they made an arrest. That's all they got." Mm. You know, they, it's, it's a long way to China. You know, you got to get that prosecution, the evidence, everything that goes along with it. My hat goes off. I applaud that small department. I don't know yeah. who gave them advice. Don't talk to the press. You don't have to give the public. Anything. I know. And, and and to the father that hired an attorney that wanted a PI because they weren't doing anything, sorry, maybe in your small town you got power, you know, it you wouldn't have got anything out here either. It it doesn't make a difference. That was the best thing they did by keeping everything under their hat. That way there's no rumors, nothing gets out, you're not following the press. And it at least it, up to this point, and even though they had they had DNA in the beginning. DNA is only good if you got a DNA to match it, mm -hmm. you know. So you got to wait all that time till you get. That something. guy had never been arrested. Yeah, never had a criminal record. A PhD. Everybody says, "Hey, I, I know this guy looks like a killer. This guy's it. This guy was working on his PhD. You know, kind of like the Unabomber. You know, he was, he was yeah. a whiz guy. Um, I don't know, man. Like, you know, well, you know, they make it sound like. I mean, n murder is murder. Sure. Uh, and, you know, you go to, like, the BTK, the guy in Wichita. Yes. And he became, like, a guy that would go around town in a car, work for the city, and, and tell you your fucking grass was too high or your hedge had to come down. And it'd be like, the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Fucking want to be cop. Yeah, he wanted to be a cop. Yeah. And he didn't. I don't know if he, he was not tall enough, but also Ed Kemper, that dude that they did Mind Hunter, mm -hmm. that he he killed the co-ed killer in the, on the Netflix show when they go and meet him, he you know he's fascinated by crime. He's fucking six nine, big fucking dude, and he goes, yeah, you know, I wanted to be a, a higher patrolman, you know, and and and, but my mom said I was too tall, and then the guy goes, I don't think there's a height requirement for being a higher patrolman, and the look on his face was like. Really? Like I, I could have done that instead of been a killer? Uh -huh. And then I don't know, man. His mom would give him shit. It just I don't know. It's just You know who's a cop? It's hard to say because, you know, your parents give you shit, but he buried his mom's head and so he could see it from the window up. I mean, I, I mean, what is that? I think he fucked his mom's mouth or things like <laughs> she took her head. I think that's a decent seat to fucking take the head with you. Uh, she gave him head. I don't know, man. That's, I mean, can you imagine? You, I, know, who's, I, you know who's a tall reserve I cop? I saw my grandma in her fucking bra one time. I was fucking from the head, waist, neck down. I didn't want to fucking sit on top. Eh? <laughs> There's uh, Shaq O'Neal is a reserve cop. He's a reserve cop out here, and he's still a reserve cop. Where was that? Until, the, until somebody showed, hey. A dude that couldn't shoot free throws is not going to tell me to stop. <laughs> I'll shoot. Okay, fucking, hey, 32% chance you got to hit in me. Uh, one, out of, one out of three, cabrón. I'll take my chances. Not me. I'm, <laughs> I'm slow. I'm slow and I'm big. I'll get hit. You know, uh, but, but of course, you know, now it's almost like nobody takes responsibility for having a woman on who said that was that guy's mom. And they everybody flocks to her, you know, like see that over here, and then that wasn't who that was, and they have to apologize. Or that guy, 
did a TikTok and he sounded like the guy and he said, everybody's like, that's him. It's not him. Look how much shit the, the cops up in Northern California had to eat because they were talking to the news. The kidnapped girl and guy that were kidnapped and were gone for a week and they came back. They said they were in on it. They accused them. They arrest all this stuff and it was all wrong. The Gabby Petito thing? Yeah. What about the what about the mom said to her son, tell me where you are, I'll bring you a shovel. What happens there? Charges? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Accessory she, after the fact. Yeah, yeah. So she was in the house with her husband and they were like hiding out and she made communication with him. She knew where he was when when she told the police uh, she didn't know. And, you know, I think, well, this is a good question. Um, if the police come to your house and, and interview you or any investigator, it's probably better not to lie. Probably. Because if you lie, then you, now you're in. Because because you you knew, I mean it's tough, man. If I would have, if you're there and you go, I emailed my son and I told him that I would bring a shovel out to him. Why would you do that? Um, because he's my son and I love him. Yeah. You know. Well, I, you know, you I, just I, made yourself an accessory. Yeah. I I had a dad, an Irishman. You know, his his son uh, was involved in a murder. And he was, his son jumped out of a car with three other guys to shoot up a house. He got in front of one of his homeboys and the homeboy shot him and killed him. And they got away. We ended up making the arrest. We got them all. And the DA at the time rejected it. And the father of the decedent came up to me. He says he wanted to know why the murder was rejected. And I said, hey, it's the DA's office. We can't do anything about it. But if you want to do something about it, and I directed him because it was a political year. You had, for DA was running for office. I said, this is what you got to do because we tried filing it. They should have been charged on Bottom line, we ended up getting charged. But the father tells me, he says, listen, he says, if my son was doing what you said he was doing, he died like the dog that he is, and he should be dead. And then he starts crying. He says, don't get me wrong. I love my son, but my son has no right to take anybody else's life, and I'll do anything I can to help those that were involved in it to get him prosecuted. And he did, and we ended up prosecuting the guys. But the dad was what he had given him up. He had given up everything. I don't know, man. I think, I think um, you know, that kid's, I mean, it just it's just tragic everywhere. I mean, a guy that wasn't popular with girls, all right, I mean, I would say the majority of dudes aren't popular with girls, especially if you come off a little creepy. You're fucking who, who's now you can't go to a place and say, "How long have you guys been working here? Where do you guys live?" But like, motherfucker, we're not gonna tell you where we live. Then you go in there a couple times and you tell the boss, "Hey, that guy is asking us where we live and if we're dating anybody." That's creepy, man. You can't. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't do that. You can't. You can't. I mean. You can't say to someone, that's my favorite waitress, the big ass tetas. Come over here, come over. <laughs> Bring some milk. Hey, just squirt it right here in my face. There it is. Huh? Yeah. What would they What would they do to you? She'd sue me? Uh, after the wife picked me up off the floor or what? Right? <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, can't see, you can't say any of that shit. No, what I want, I've never been that far out. You know, I, I've never been that far out, but I... I wouldn't be. You ever went to the movies and pull your your, your Vatican through a popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that by myself. I went to go see Forty Eight Hours. I did it to myself. <laughs> that, that's how fucking sad I was. Eh? <laughs> I'll be in fucking. I'll be in even forget I had a fucking hole in there. And that's just I put in bed on. Motherfucker put hair in my fucking popcorn. No. And some fucking raisinets. Pulling my fucking wells. I man. never, I never did go to the show that much. You know, when I was a kid, <laughs> I, I never went to, to the, the show. show. You know, I was sixteen years well, old. Go to the show. Seventeen years old, I went into the army, so I didn't. And then when I came back, fuck, I was twenty-one when I got married. Yeah. So yeah. I, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. I was. What the hell, man? I don't know what the fuck. And hey, you've been married for fifty-two years. We just had our anniversary, fifty-two years. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a long time. Fuck, if I'd have killed him the first year, I'd already been out of the joint by now. Man. You would have, huh? You would have done probably 30 years. Hey, um, I don't know, man. Listen, I I was thinking about that in the car. I mean, 
um, I'm not sure what people do um, in the holidays. You know, I don't really see a lot of people. Uh, but I'll change the subject. I'll, I'll stay to this. When in the early 90s, uh, when I was married, Ann and I bought a house in Sherman Oaks. And the guy that we bought it from, him and his wife were retired and they were extras in movies and shows. They would, you know, they'd go, that was their thing for day there for fun. And I was uh, on top of the roof, clean out the rain gutters. And the guy, I think his name was Ted, pulls up and he's kind of halfway in the yard. And he looks up and he says, are you a roofer? And I said, no, sir. Are you a contractor of any kind? I said, I'm not. He says, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a comedian. He goes, well, get down before you hurt yourself and you're not able to tell jokes and feed your family. Let a fucking professional do that shit and get your ass down from there before you hurt yourself. And whenever somebody has asked me to do something that is not what I do, I always say, you know, mine wanted me to carry some some boxes into her house and there's stairs. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I can do that. And she's like, why not? I said, because I'm not a, I don't carry fucking boxes around for a living. I, there's just a few of them. I said, man, I'm carrying a box. I miss a step. I fall. I break my fucking hip. Then what? Right? Good. Good. I, uh, 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 there was a woman that on, on Blue Beetle, tiny little lady, hair person, has a big ass wrist thing on her wrist. And I said to her, how did that happen? And she goes, oh, fuck, I was hanging a curtain rod at my house. I thought I had one more step on the ladder. I didn't, and I fucking landed on it and broke it in fucking a million places. Jeremy Remmer got run over by his own snowmobile. Like, like, yeah. And, a, and, a, and not like when you, when you got like a John Deere, you're cutting the grass. It takes you fucking two days because the little John Deere, that's what fucker had. He had a snow cat. Like, like a big one. And he has them. And, you know, he's out there in wherever, Reno or wherever, and he clears the, you know, Mr. Fucking America, he clears the snow for his neighbors and clears the street for his neighbors. But is that what he, does he work for the Department of Transportation in in Lake Tahoe or Reno? No. I called the Department of Transportation for my neighbors. <laughs> I doing shit. Hey, this dude. God bless him. I hope he's all right. Yeah. There's thousands of people that get hurt every day doing something that is not what they do. And they can't say no. Are you an electrician? No, it's just a switch. Go on there and fucking burn your fucking house down. Right? Yeah. It's, man, all of that stuff. Uh, you're a plumber? Hey, it's gone. The next time fucking chorro, cut all your fucking neighbors in there. You're fucking sleeping with caca fucking cheats. <laughs> I mean, people don't get it until until they get it. Like yeah. that, that's 30 years that that guy told me that. No, I, I, I hired for everything. I don't do shit. Amen. Anything around my house, I hire somebody to do it for me. Hey, now. hey Dad, come and help me hang the. No, no, no. Fucking, I was hanging the lights with my grandpa. This was before. I was like 12. And he goes, lean over here and put it under. I fucking almost went over. I was leaning over the house. I almost went fucking over the house. Almost. I was 12. And at 12, you know, I'm playing baseball. Not that I was fucking uh, uh, athletic, but when I started to go over, I don't know what it is that makes your fucking uñas dig into the fucking <laughs> bl- the tar of that fucking roof. I fucking, I was a second away from maybe being paralyzed for life. Yeah. My- and I was just like. Fucking had a nail under. Now, why would I fucking get off and look? I'm, I'm not. I'm not fucking hang lights. He says, "Put it, nail the nail. Put the nail between the two fucking wires. And if I fucking and and it's already plugged in, this motherfucker is like, hey, with a fucking hammer, all metal, with a fucking nail grounded, with a fucking metal fucking like." That- I- my grandson does all that shit for us now. Man. He, 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 he takes over that stuff. Listen, I'll, this is a new year. Don't fuck yourself up by trying to do shit that you don't do on the regular. <sighs> Tell your old lady, hey, if you love me, bring some other dude in there to watch you change. Give you a rope. No. But That's I mean, it. but you, people, people slip in their fucking bathrooms. I can't tell you how many friends I have that have retired and doing simple shit. Hey, I just... Climbed up the ladder. I'm on the ladder just trimming a bush and walk out there. They're down. A few of them have died. 
Some have ended up all fucked up. They a couple died. Yeah, and so it's just I don't. Uh, the highest or, I go is or, a curb. Yeah, or, or if you're in your sixties and you and you're active and you think you can do it, and you're out there with a with a fucking thing, getting oranges with a fucking stick, and you touch a wire you don't even fucking see. And fucking the whole fuck it's like flying over California. You smell orange. You're like, uh, you got orange yeah. juice all over the ground. <laughs> Let me fly it over. Them. You know, all of that shit, man. My, it's just bad, man. It's like my, you know, and it's in everybody's. As they get older, you just think you can do every. They want to prove to the younger people we can still do it. My my suegro, my father in law, God rest his soul, he was a landscaper. And he was in his 70s, early 80s, and he still wanted to get up there and trim the avocado tree, pull the avocados down, do this, do that. I remember uh, we had a compadre of mine was going to lay some grass in his backyard, and we were going to go help him, you know, rotate the dirt. <laughs> and so I said, we can do this. And he's, and my father and I heard us talking. He says, I'll go over there and help him. <laughs> and I told my, I told my compadre, don't, don't let him. Don't, don't let him tell him no. You'll be sorry. And he says, oh, okay, okay, Julio, come on down. So we went down, and the first he looked at us, and he says, oh, you guys may be good cops, but you ain't shit at landscaping. So he redid everything, made everybody work out. Hey, we got to do this. Gotta. He knew his business. Mm -hmm. So everybody trusted him. But when it came down, he would climb up trees still. He'd do that. And we, mm. you know, my, my wife and her brother would, don't do it. You know, and I'd say, Julio, don't do it. You know, you're... No, no, I can still get this, and you couldn't stop the guy. Fortunately, he never fell down. Fortunately, but all you need to fall down is once. Yeah, once. That's it. One time, and he it, and it never and, happened. And even if you, even if you, you know, I would tell my grandmother because my grandmother didn't want to walk. I don't want people to know that something's wrong with me. God, fuck, you, you're, you, you're shaped like a fucking. Fucking pretzel and fucking all fucking twinkle, you know, things. Are, who the fuck is nobody's looking at you anyway? Shut, shut up. Yeah. You know, she's like, I'm like, who the fuck is looking at you? She would get all mad. When my mom, when my mom had to go to a walker, <laughs> she did not want to use a walker because that made her look yeah. weak. Yeah, well, thing. give her the fucking tennis balls yeah. then. And You're I not going to use them. She got hey, out there. my grandmother was like, you know, I don't want everybody to know. It's like, Grandma... First of all, nobody's looking at you, right? And she fell, and I used to tell her, it's funny because it's been so long. I mean, she's been gone for not long, but it was a long. I used to tell her, when after you fall, the ride's over. Like I would tell her, you know, the fucking <laughs> ride's over because you just can't take it, the shock. The I, shock of being hurt affects your body. If somebody's, if somebody's 70, or seventy five, and they take a they bust their hip or bust their elbow, they'll be dead within five years. My mom had a knee replaced, the first one. She had two of them done, but she had the first one she had done, and she's out there worried at it, Dad. Had to be somebody's wedding. She's there taking it easy, and give her some pisto and you know a few shots in her, and she said, "Come on, mijo, a que bailar, let's go, a la chingada con la rodilla," you know, and she'd get out there and she'd dance and have a good old time. You couldn't stop the lady, you know. She just—it was in her. Dude, you know, I wasn't around my mom a lot growing up, uh, fortunately. But you know, in the in the, like maybe the late '60s, we had a slip and slide, mm -hmm. and we told her go standing up, and uh, she took off and went standing up, and, and her feet went out from under her, and she hit her fucking head and knocked herself out. And you know, when, like when nobody's driving the car, it just goes kind of fades <laughs> off. <laughs> She landed on her head, and, and the water took her, but it took her, like, and it spun her around, like, you know. She just fucking ended up like like uh, a car that had run out of gas and just turned. It was so funny because she spun. You know, she fucking knocked out, and she just spun around like that. And I don't know if we were laughing harder because she hit her fucking head, or then she just came to a rest, like, you know. Oh, fucking <laughs> Fucking hit her head and palo, you can fucking hear it. We go go standing up, and she fucking bo both her heels were together. You know you don't go like that. Yeah, at least go like that. She went with both her heels together. Those motherfuckers were up here, and she hit boom. I just, I can still see her fucking fade out, man. We laughed so fucking hard, and nobody went to a resuscitator. They had fucking, fucking <laughs> water. You know, to, you know the water used to go over that fucking other fucking knee blade. The fucking all uh, uh, shit. Goddamn. Uh, uh, 
Man, yeah. that was awful, man. That shit. <laughs> shit. My mom, my mom and dad. It's yeah. some of the funniest. It's sad, but it's some yeah. of the funniest. I had a swim. I had a. I still have. I had a swimming pool, and I had a slide to go into the pool. And my mom and dad, neither one of them were swimmers. And my mom says, "Hey, go down the slide, and I'll go down." My dad said, "All right." He says, "You go down first, though." She says, "No, cover on because then you won't." He says, "I'll go down." He talked to her, and we're all saying, "Mom, don't do it, Mom." Don't. I was afraid she's gonna fall just climbing can you up still the ladder. See it right, can you still see it right now? Yes. And she went down. She went. She's gonna book it down. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. My dad, I thought he was gonna fall. He's laughing so hard. She says, "I wanna, I wanna," <laughs> and he says, "I ain't doing it, man." <laughs> and he never did. He just laughed his ass off, went and ran in the house. You can't. Well, yeah. I mean, there were no. Hey, listen. How about? There were no safety rails in the bathroom. There was no curbs with that 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 they made it for uh, handicapped d- people that are disabled. Yeah. If you if, it, if you were in a wheelchair and you came to the the curb, you saw a fucking curb. You're like, bad, oh motherfucker, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can't get up there. And you know, fucking and and that's in the United States. In Mexico, the fucking curbs are this big. Yeah, they're tall. Big in Mexico. Fuck it like this, right? They got to pick you up. How come? How, how, why is that? Yeah, because, because of, of the floods. water? Yeah, because of floods. Just keep the water down. Aaron, there. There's my fucking three feet. Eh? You, you... They got some big curb, big curbs over there. If it's, it's something in a like flood a zone. fucking, uh, yeah. a pole, like when you run, do the high jump, when you go like that, you go, like, I'm going to make it on the curb, and you go like that, like Dwight Stones used to do it like that, and fucking try to get up over the curb. Fucking high, man. Yeah, they are. That's all for flood control. That's all it is. Get water, man. Yeah. Can't Somebody, do all the fucking gardeners in there, they can't put a fucking irrigation system in Mexico. Huh? All the fucking wadas came over here and work. Over there, you fucking rains for two hours, uh, fucking 17 uh, people fucking drowning in a fucking uh, diner. Eh? Oh, man. <laughs> I had him. It's awful, man. But I mean, I mean, you, you see, I, I think you just see it. Like, Jerry, like Jeremy Remmer, <clears throat> Renner, I mean, he got he got run over by by his own fucking snowcat. I mean, that shit is like that's like being put in a fucking wood chipper. Wow. And his doc I mean his neighbor was a fucking doctor, put a tourniquet, fuck our neighbor, but I got no cover. Fucking blood squirting up. All right, oh fucking raspadas. Fucking slow colds, eh? Come ah. on. <laughs> Make my fucking cherry too. Yeah, fucking dude, he would have been dead. Oh. Fucking Mexican sea ice. Everybody goes, oh, hey, I want water. Fuck, uh, uh, I want water rainbow. Can I, uh, fucking blood. That motherfucker would have bled out. See this football player that just went down uh, uh, yep. yesterday. The game, yep. Yeah. And the doc was on the TV saying today, uh, he's still, the only reason he's still alive today is because they started CPR immediately and they, they had the thing there to. What happened, man? That, he just, he got hit in the chest. Oh. And just went down, whatever, an E G E A E G, and he had a heart attack. That's that's what it was. His heart stopped. He says, the doctor says. He didn't have pads on or anything? Yeah, know? he had pads on. That the, the, they put fucking show for the fucking nightclub and shit. I'm all right. Do fucking shoulder pads up here. Doctor says most of the time this is, it. people die from it. The only reason he's still alive today is because they had doctors there. They had people there to jump on him. I and, mean. CPR right away, try to keep him going, and he's still in critical condition. But uh, that was tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think years ago, I don't think anybody's. Well, I mean, I don't watch all the games, but there was a, I think a Detroit Lions player that died in the seventies. Like, mm. uh, but um, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't think any sport can uh, take. Uh, athletes dying in the course of pl- of normal play. Yeah, and this kid was so young. He was only 24 years old. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. How's that? So it, it just, I I hope he doesn't die. A lot of people praying for him. You but know, did like, he have a heart? Listen, the, the thing, you know. It was a heart attack. That's what the doctor Motherfucker said. had a heart attack at yeah. 24. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not a doctor, but when when they taught us. No, the clearly. CPR, see, CPR and all this shit. <laughs> the, they, they used to teach you this. What they call a precardial thump, you know, before you start, give that heart a chingasso right there. It just so he got hit in the chest, and maybe he had the ad- adverse reaction. Yeah. You could stop it. I I, I don't I don't Can know. You? 
Yeah. I'll tell you what. Dr. Lopez, you go, I would go there, roll him over. <laughs> you put a fucking watch that right here, the fucking oil. I the motherfucker be fuck. I'm up. I'm up. Hey, if somebody's work. tickling your oil, they go in there, and it don't work one finger, you put two, you put three, four, then roll them back over. Now that you guys can try your, your yeah, way. Pronounce them. I already tried mine. <laughs> yeah. He, now, you you know, hurry up. It was right? One in a million shots. You shot put one in there, and maybe he moves, you know, you know, two, three, and then sass, my guy, one more, I'm going to let you know. And if it, you know... The line's still like that. Roll them over and be like, okay, I've done all the okay. best I could. That's it. <laughs> Do you glove up? <laughs> no. I can't <laughs> fucking gloves, eh? You just clean your hand right there on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, doctor, another one. Uh, another one. Uh, Wipe your uh, hand next, over here. Next, next page. <laughs> We got another one down. Come up over here. He's in the he's in the locker room. Fuck it's too fucking far. Bring his ass over here. And then you got another one. He's like, no, no, not George again. Fuck no, no, hey, no. you start gentle. Hey, come on. Come on, Ron. What's his name? Ron, whatever his name. Fucking, you know. And then you try it as many, whatever his number is. 17, you try 17. Don't worry, turn them over. So clearly, yeah. you know, the guys that are heavier have the higher number. Those are guys that Need a little more special. Stay, you stay away from me, George. <laughs> <laughs> fucking chorro. He wakes up in the morning. It happened to be a fucking, fucking my ass. That's it. You stay away oh, from th me. You can th have me to thank, sir. Hey, if I go down, let me die. No, but that no, dude, was, no. he was he was dying on Yeah, oh, he, man. He, he, for all intents and purposes, his heart stopped huh? right there on the field. Heart stopped. His heart stopped on the field. When your heart stops, that means it ain't pumping. It's like... You know, you, you you burn a bearing, the engine. You break an oil oil line, you burn a bearing. So it just stopped. And Fuck. it takes oxygen 24. to run the brain and run everything else. He just it wasn't there. Fortunately, they had medical staff right there. Fuck, man. With, with, with five minutes, if nobody touches you, you know, that's the point of no return most of the time. But he had people with him within a minute starting CPR. Well, and then they had, you know, they had the CPR, they have all the equipment, they have regular team doctors there. They were able to work on him, get him loaded and get him over. And what was the hit? I, I didn't see the game. What, what, what was it? It was a, it was a, he was tackling the guy, but the guy hit him right in the chest with a helmet, you know, in the tackle. Yeah. And he stood up, you know, right after that, he stood up, lasted about maybe what, about five seconds standing up. And then he just. Passed out. He just went down. Didn't look like it was anything unusual. Man. Nothing. But it, it was. What about all those fucking Mexicans in Mexico that got kicked by the fucking donkey? They, they survived. <laughs> Man, they come up behind them. To, huh? You ever I, see those dudes that get yeah, kicked in the I chest? Got, God I damn. Got, I got they kicked fucking in the, go fly. I got kicked in the chest by a steer. And the wife says, how's your chest? I said, how's my chest? What are you talking about? And she says, you got kicked in the chest? I didn't get no kick in the chest. And I opened up my shirt, and there's two fucking hoof prints full oh. of shit on my chest. How, how, how did that happen? I, I was doing something stupid. I, I was, they, they had, uh, I was once a Not member. like Rudy Moreno fell hands they, first in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's uh, For another benefit. Hey, I need another benefit. All right. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to go hands <laughs> in. <laughs> I don't want to burn my hands, but I got, I've already had all the other all the other parts of my body. I was uh, fucking a man. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know about me. At one point in time in my career, I was a card carrying member of the uh, All Police Rodeo Association, and so you know they had a regular rodeo, and it was for just like a a regular <laughs> rodeo. They had. It that was shit. for money, for buckles, you know, time, and, and it'd go up and down the state, and I was a card-carrying <laughs> member of the fucking rodeo association. Well, what did you do, though? I'm, how long, well, how this, long could the guy stay on your back? This, this is what... <laughs> 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 well, they fucking tie your fucking... Well, hey, they couldn't come up with... And to this day, they can't come up with a better way to tie the, <laughs> that steer's nuts and a fucking... Come on. They go, all right, are you, uh, you, you, are you on? I'm on. They fucking tie, the, they tie their nuts, right? Yeah, I don't know. I never got on a bull. They have bull riding, bronc riding. What did you do? Oh, uh, you just went? No, no. I was. I did something. They, they didn't have bulldogging. You know, that's where you jump off the horse and you bulldog the steer oh, down to the ground. Yeah, okay. that's crazy. So 
in order to eliminate some injuries, they had something for fun, and it was called it was called steer dressing. And you'd get you'd, they'd get a full goddamn steer, big. You know what? I wish I was fucking high <laughs> instead of just a little bit buzzing, because this I know this is going to be one that. I, I would have liked to have been a little bit. They 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 put the steer in a chute. They give you it was about a ten or fifteen foot rope that was around the steer's neck, and then there's a three man team. You had to give the steer till he got to the chalk, and then you could run after. Oh, um. and you would the three man team stop the steer. One guy would head it, take it down. Another guy would jump on the once the steer is down. The number two guy would jump on the steer's belly because now the steer's upside down. The third guy, I was the third guy. When you go in there, you have a pair of ladies' panties stretch across your chest and the holes were your arms. So I got ladies' underwear right here. Now, as the steer is down, he's on, the guy jumps on his belly. He gets the hind legs of the steer, pushes them towards me. I grab the steer's legs. He then grabs the panties and pulls them down. It's a timed event. You did it for money and for buckles. That was the, the, the steer dressing. I was a steer dresser. And my family was up there watching and what are the what are the what did the buckles say? Well, they're just road trans. No, no. Trans goat competition. It was uh I So was, you, you put the you put the pantyhose on the steer's on legs? On the steer, yes. Steer's legs. If if I were if I were back, just imagine a steer on his back and the hind legs up like this, and the the third guy stands there, grabs the top of those legs, and the guy sitting on the belly pulls the panties down on the hind quarters, and it's done for money. It's done. That's it's shit. Time, it's time it, event. I've I, I've never seen. I've never heard of that or seen it. Yeah, it was. I had never did the first time I did it. I, I mean, got in the arena. And they're very particular. And, and and the steer is, is like it doesn't want to you know it doesn't you know no it doesn't want it to doesn't do want it, to, it's a full grown steer. Is it a boy or a, a, a girl? No, it's a big boy with horns. He's a badass dude. And and the first time I was in there with with like a big vet got balls and yeah, everything with nylons on. The, <laughs> God damn! The guy that talked me in was the guy that broke me in in homicide. <laughs> the guy, and, and the he, guy that talked me into it. Yeah, and we're down there. And the first time I was down there, I looked at him and I just said, you know what? Fuck you. And he said, why? And I said, I have no business being down here. The fucking steer was big. Man, I'm down with all this shit. shit. And now I'm scared. And it turned out, and then he, he couldn't flip. Were you wearing off. your helmet? Like a, like no, a, no. You had to, they had. They told you how to dress. You had to man. have cowboy boots, cowboy dress, cowboy hat. You, you, there was dress. Just like your golf tournaments, you know, they take you had to dress like a cowboy. Did the, the, and did the steer kick? Like, was he kicking yeah. his legs? Yeah. The, the steer is just He's making animal. noise and shit. You know, yeah. he's moving his legs. Like Matter of fact, we did it uh, one, the last one that I but did. But I think I think at some point, you're like, no, Carola, come on. It, you, it fucking turns you on, right? No, the last time I did it. Like, I you're rubbing your shit. Wessel against his stomach. Like, <laughs> you're like, come on, motherfucker. I burned the shit out of my hands because the rope, I got rope burn, burned the shit Oh, yeah, hands. fuck. Uh, my partner, the, the lead guy, he got his leg hooked up the rope. The fucking steer drug him all over the arena. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know a lot was, of people went to pay to go see this oh, shit. I would hey kinda, listen, I'd fucking pay to go see that. I shit. I got treated, you know, by the paramedics. Did they there. do like the siren? Woo! And the fucking dudes it, come it out. Was, no, it was a regular rodeo. Wow. And and how just, come they don't do it anymore? I don't know. I they still have the police rodeo association because I just talked to somebody the other day. Uh, that was doing it, and I, I don't know because I just stopped. Can you ask them and see uh, when they have events? I can find out. Well, I think cruelty to animals, like you can't put nylons on them without his well, consent. It, it wasn't nylons. There were just no garter belts or anything. I think maybe, you know, if, if they want them, you know, maybe he keeps his legs close, but if he opens them up, he's like, <laughs> hey, save Sexist. those. Save those. <laughs> I, we're, 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 I don't know, man. Yeah, th- and he kicked, and, and my wife and kids were up in the stands. But who? But who? I, I mean, who had the upper hand? Because that motherfucker, how, uh, that steer's got to weigh five hundred pounds. They're fucking big. And he's more fucking than rough, 500 right? pounds. Yeah, they're big. They're bad. They're nasty animals. You know, well, not nasty. Did anybody animals. die or anybody kicked no, in the no, fucking nobody head? Nobody got hurt. And, and I remember it was kind of like a movie. You know, I'm walking out, my hand is a bandage. <laughs> 
and some little kid comes up, hey, mommy, mommy, look at there's one of the cowboys that was in the rodeo. And I'm sitting there, how you doing, little partner? He says, you're the guy that got his hands burning. Your partner got run all over the <laughs> arena. <laughs> Fun. I wanted to say, get the fuck away from That's me. That's crazy, man. You know, guys were stars and everything? Yeah, and, and I had to go straight from there to work because I was working at You night. know what, man? That's That's... I don't know. I never, I never heard of that. It was fun. It, 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 it was fun. Uh, did it a few times, and that was it. You know, I don't need this shit. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get hurt. You know, it's still a huge part of like of that lifestyle. I played golf in uh, in New Mexico when I was doing that golf, walking with Herb, and it was a guy that, I mean, you know, he just, you know, the rodeo dudes like you, no one's gonna win the rodeo being five seven, like the dudes you have to be. Six plus. No, because the bull you, riders you, are small. Bull, they are? Yeah, yeah. That's less weight. The low center. The, there was, a, they're, they're there was a dude. There's If you look it up, uh, there's a famous bull rider who's a champ, championship bull rider named Gil Carrillo. Not to be confused with this one. Gil Carrillo was from Texas. Him and his brother out of Is Dallas, still Texas. Alive? I believe he's still alive. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get him in here. Yeah, and, he's, and tell he, what, what's I mean for 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 Latinos, a, I think anytime you can play with the food before you eat it is going to be yeah. fun. Look at look his name up as a bull rider, Aaron. But there was a dude that I played golf with, and he had he, we had the belt buckle that he won, you know, like a, whatever you know the rhinestone belt buckle that he wore with. We didn't play golf in jeans. Uh, one of them, I mean, whatever you know, they love the belt like Elvis, the fucking belt buckle, and uh, it's like I don't give a fuck if that dude had won. His kindergarten fucking bull riding competition. It's impressive to to sit on a bull and um, strap. I mean, you strap into where. Listen, man. You, you know, other sports like they strap you in where you can get out. When they when they strap those dudes in and they tighten the rope, you, you're really not oh, oh, going no. anywhere. They, they He's got to loosen it. If he can't loosen it, he's stuck. They don't stuck. leave you a fucking option, right? Yeah. They don't leave you a fucking option. Yeah. You got to depend on those clowns to loosen that shit up, man. That's a tough. Fight. I don't know how everybody breaks bones and that stuff. I mean, and, fuck. It must be, uh, and it's not even that long. Like you know, if you stay on for seconds, eight seconds. Fuck, and that thing is jumping and shit. Yeah. Fucking. I'm watching. Uh, you ever thought of running with the bulls in Spain? No, fuck. <laughs> I'd like to watch it from a hotel room up above. But you know, do they still do that? Yeah. There you go. Five, five, 125. That was you in first grade. That was me in kindergarten. Um, wow, man. What the fuck? Yeah. And hey, where does he live? Dallas, Texas, I think. I think we got to reach out to him. He was a good one. He was a real good one. The NFL playoff picture is locked in and my go-to place for wild card round action is DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 and free bets instantly. I love DraftKings because it makes me feel like I'm in the game even when I'm not at the game. And win or lose, I always feel I'm on the upside, man. And I've won, and it's exciting. And then you get to uh, rag on your friends that don't win. But just being in, it's like being in the game. It's like having a little skin in the game. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code OMGHI. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get $200 in free sports bets instantly. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook with code OMGHI. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Hey, everybody's got New Year's goals, and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. Listen, man, when it comes to your door, you can't help but be eating right. Look for an easy way to eat well and save money this year. Cut back on expensive takeout delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up restaurant-quality meals right in your own kitchen. Hey, Aaron, what are your favorite meals? You know, my wife and I love the uh, falafel power bowls. Uh, there's a seared steak and potatoes with béarnaise sauce that's really good. There's uh, southwest pork. There's bean burritos. What's great is that, you know, you come home from work and you don't have to really decide what you're going to make, how to make it. It's all there on the card. Easy peasy within 15 minutes, 30 minutes. 
It's a little, it's a nice little thing you can do together. It's great. I love it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash OMGHI21 and use code OMGHI21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash OMGHI21 and use code OMGHI21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. Hey, man. Gil Carrillo, how you doing? Gil? Yeah, Steve. What's up, Steve? George. How are you, brother? How are you, my Good, friend? man, good. How are you guys? Good, good. My apologies. Um, I got dropped off uh, two blocks away. You didn't drive? No. Uh, Uber, uh, sloppy, huh. uh, booze. How are you? Oh, you've been boozing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. God, God bless you, me, man. So are we. Well, what are we drinking? A little bit. We're drinking a little Can beer. Can I have there? a little sip? Yeah, come on. No. Okay. Yeah, fuck yeah. Where, where are you at? You did... Uh, uh, another podcast? No, this is this is it. Come on, man. No, this dude. is the one. Oh. Hey, um, wow, everybody's wearing hats up. Hey, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, gentlemen. Happy New Year. Cheers. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Cheers, Mr. Lopez. Cheers. cheers. How are you? Oh, that's fine. Um, I'm good. That's good. <clears throat> welcome. We we're talking about Gil. Was uh, Gil's a sheriff? He was a former sheriff. Uh, instrumental in the capture of Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. No, uh, he's yeah one yeah. of the uh, stars of um, what's it called? Netflix documentary. The Netflix that four part documentary on Netflix. Sure, he that was, that was me. I mean, how about that? I mean, he was the I'm one that he, I was sitting right next to. Him. I know. <laughs> I overweight. I always, I always say. I always say this. He was the one that said. It's one guy, and everybody else said it can't be one guy. It's got to be two guys. And no, he was it's like, always one guy. It's yeah. always one guy that one guy. has the initiative, the gumption to say, no, we're going to figure – the one guy that goes outside the box. I went outside and, the box. Yeah. Now, what, what, why? That's always the question. Why did you have the gumption to go outside the box? I saw stuff. I took some classes, advanced mm-hmm. sexual – uh, advanced criminal Talk to me about that sexual, sexual, right. sexual, 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 sexual yeah, stuff. Yeah, please. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you, Jorge. There, thank there, you. Was stuff, <laughs> there was stuff that I could see that the non-educated cop and old school homicide cop would not see. <clears throat> and so I saw this stuff, and then I was alleging something that had never been documented in criminal history because he was kidnapping little kids, little girls, little boys. He wasn't killing them. So off the grid, unorthodox. Unorthodox. But what he was doing was stuff that I had learned from this class that I truly believed in. So when somebody sticks a gun in front of your face, right. they're not, you know, in front of the women. It wasn't to kill them. It was to scare. You want to see them scared mm-hmm. shitless. Sure. That drove his sexual. That was sexual. Wow. A sign of sexual deviancy. So how did you know? How did you pick up on that? Because I, I, I would assume. Did you go to the dentist? <laughs> What, what's that pin you have on there? Like a happy tooth? Fuck you, George. It, it is, huh? You don't have any cavities? Congratulations. Hey, you don't have any cavities. Hey. <laughs> it's like a happy tooth. I'm stepping in. And by the way, my apologies to you gentlemen. No, no, don't worry. No, no, don't worry. Out of respect, out of respect to you, no, by I, have way, a, I have a cavity. I, I gotta, I gotta say, out of respect, I gotta kiss the ring to Mr. Lopez. No, why? No, because uh, why? Why? Why the fuck? Comics like me look up to you. Comics like me say this gentleman. Well, uh, uh, like generally accomplished some real shit, I ABC, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to acknowledge the moment in time where I just say, Mr. Lopez, our our moments in time are so few and li- That's limited, but I just true. want to say, Thank I you, apologize. Uh, there's a white piece of shit, privilege, no Burke Kreischer, that got me hammered. <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're talking about old times. We're, but yeah. That's good. Fuck but yeah. I want to I, I wanna say apologize to... To you, mm-hmm. apologize to you, oh, sir, oh, by man. the way, for <laughs> very kind, not man. acknowledging what it is very that kind. you're doing. So, <laughs> I, very kind. No apologies to me. Are you kidding? I just love to have he, a guest he, that drinks. He, and that's he tells me. Here that's all fucking. He, he tells me. What, what one is time, this? Beer. <laughs> somebody asked him, and I, I don't know uh, who it was that asked him, hey, how did you get these end of Felipe Esparza here? How, how do you know Felipe? So, well, Felipe and I have worked together for a long time. That was him and Joe. Sure. He says, and, and what about Gil? He says, I don't know, give the motherfucker a hat. I can't get rid of the <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I've I, been here. I, I but I mean, you know, about. everything is true crime now. You know, everything. Yeah. Every, and everybody thinks that they're a fucking sleuth. And I spend hours on fucking my daughter, fucking my, got me. Listen, I, 
It's almost like there was a comedian that said, you ever watch porn on the computer? I said, no, nah, man, I'm married. I don't even fuck that time to watch what porn. He goes, red tube, brazzers, tube galore. Oh, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck is that? They just asked that last week. I'm like, what's that? And he's like, and I look, and fucking 20 years later, I'm still looking at, I mean, I was doing good, man. I wasn't looking at porn. You know what I mean? It's like in the fucking Twilight Zone. Hey, that doesn't gamble hey, and put hey, the coin in there. Maybe that's why the scarf flew down on you last night. That fucking scarf touched my fucking well. Can I ask you something, sir? Yeah. No, what no, what sir, made you go. read between the tea leaves to go to to say, no, there's something more? Because that's what every great story is, to yeah. your point. Like, like you always disseminate and they go, oh, well. You, I don't think pattern, you can, I don't think you can teach very, instinct. I don't on, think you can on, teach on it. Exactly. Very, on the very first case. Short, short version. He pulled a gun on Maria Hernandez, mm -hmm. and he shot her. He was within 18 inches of her. Now, if it was Martina uh, Lee or Kim, would you have cared as much? Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. Sure, no, no. It, it gets better. She had a roommate. Oh, shit, here we yeah, go. She had a roommate. She had a roommate. Here we go. And? So he pulled the trigger. The lights went out in the garage because she had on, already hit the garage door. On Cinco de Mayo. So yes. it, it hit, <laughs> and she went down like a sack of shit. She got he, hit. He thinks he's just shot her in the head. She's dead. What happened was she had some keys in her hand, hit the keys, didn't exit. Hey. Ended up in her hand. Listen. No. In the fucking documentary, she shows the key. It has the fucking bullet where the no. bullet ricocheted off her fucking hand. Yeah. So, Are you serious? So, yeah. So she's alive. She, he goes I'm, inside the condo proper because they're in the garage. She hits a garage door opener. She runs out through the alley through the back way. She hears a second shot. Fuck. She hears a second. Her roommate is inside the car. Sure, yeah. So right now, if you were watching this on 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 cinema, you'd be in your popcorn and saying, "Run, Maria, run! Don't be stupid! Sure, yeah. Hey, don't be!" And she runs around to the front and, and goes back inside. She doesn't go back inside. Richard comes out the front door. He's already. So shot. is Richard. So is Richard. Richard, yeah. man. And he so, is not Latino or Asian. So he, okay. So, so yeah. he okay. He then comes out, and he sees her. You don't know who's more surprised, her to see uh, him or him to see her. Uh, yeah. And they start dancing around a car, and then he's got the gun up, and she finally just puts her hands up and says, don't shoot me again. You've already shot me once. Sure. He put the gun by his side and turned around way, and walked away. But that, 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 that's bananas to have gotten shot in the keys wow. that are on your hand and say, I'm, that's incredible but wherewithal. she's no longer in fear. He no longer sees a fear in her face. How does she not fear fear? Well, she, she figured, fuck it, I'm, I'm dead. I'm as good as dead. You already shot me once. That's crazy. Don't shoot me again. Yeah. He, he goes and leaves. You go inside the house. Now you find, show you, I wasn't just after solving Mexican crimes, Dale Okazaki. Jeweler to the stars. No. <laughs> Japanese lady. <laughs> She's in there. <laughs> and when we go to the autopsy... <laughs> It just felt like it. Set a square. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We go to the autopsy. She's been shot right in the forehead. Come on. Right here. But she's got a contusion in the back of her head that tells me he hit her in the back of the head. Mm. Why didn't he just kill her when he had the shot? He, he didn't do it. He tells us after the case, oh after the game, I'm sitting there talking Check to him. Check this out. He says... She laid there quietly, and then she got up. She put her hands on top of a countertop. And she's figured he's got to be gone. He's got to be gone. No, These are both women, by the way, yes. not men. Yeah. Okay, no, so yeah. no sound. <laughs> okay. So he, so quiet. she's laying there. He fucking hits her. She goes down. It's quiet. She's in the kitchen. She goes, she's like, this mother, he's got, he's got to be gone. And when she reaches she up. She goes like this. She pulls herself up over the head. He's on the other side of the counter waiting for her. No. To pull up. When no. he pulls up, she screams and bam. He shoots her right in the running lights, no. because because he got off like on her fear in the, on the fear yeah. in her face. So now she's dead. Then he what is her name again? Dale Okazaki. She then he to lived. The Wait a minute, we're not we're not cutting it off just on <laughs> Japanese women, because forty minutes later he stops a gal, Silent Yu, Chinese lady. Mm -hmm. He ends up. The informants oh, yeah. on the case, the neighbors that saw this thought it was a boyfriend girlfriend dispute. Richard was following her, blocked her. She backed up into a panic stop, into a parked car. Engine's running, it's in reverse. She can't go anyplace. He's right there. He drags her out of the car mm -hmm. and puts three in her on her side. Fuck. Why didn't he kill her while she was right inside the car? 
Right. Dale Okazaki, why didn't he kill her when he had the chance? So with the educa education that I had. But this is your job, right? This is where yeah. you disseminate. And so now I'm sitting there saying there's something different here. This is signs of a sexual deviant. So it went off. On a, then when I found the kids and what, what happened to the kids and their descriptions, that's how it all, that's what I did. But nothing had ever been documented in criminal history doing that. So it was a rough road to hope. But also, <clears throat> he was in El Paso. Did he kill anyone in El Paso? Uh, no, we couldn't find any in El Paso. Uh, El Paso, which had a really good solve rate for the department they had. He had a, they had uh, a great small solve rate. He had an uncle or a cousin that went, he had a cousin. that went to war yeah. and came back fucked up, and he killed his girlfriend in front of him. Yeah. And said, watch this. I'm going oh to fucking God. shoot her. And shot... And shot her in front of him. He's probably 15. Yeah. And he's the one that taught Richard that small caliber, 22, 25, gun of choice. You know, rather than a large caliber gun. So that's what Richard used. Guys, I'm glad I'm here. Uh, cheers. You know, somebody, Happy New Year. Somebody Holy said, shit. Uh, uh, no, guys, no, I'm going to go back I out. Some, i got to go to Chili's or Applebee's <laughs> and get the season of <laughs> fajitas. <laughs> this is fucking hey, great. No, Thank you because, all for having me. Thank but, you. But, you know, they always said, oh, hey, shit. how long does it take you guys to talk about murder? <laughs> I mean, you just walked in. I mean, we were just giving them the description. Can I say real Shit, quick? We, we were talking about horses right now. <laughs> but his, but his also his partner was the guy who found the Hillside Strangler. Hillside Strangler. At, no, yeah. really? Yeah, my partner was Frank I mean, Salerno. Uh, those plug, were the days. Plug for Frank Salerno. God damn it. His grandson, Matt Salerno, is playing for Notre Dame. Great job. Great kid. He, he's just an awesome. Notre Dame the college? Yes. He's playing Notre Dame. His younger brother's playing there. I, the youngest. Can he figure out the play before they call it? Or? Oh, fuck. <laughs> he's, he's a special teams guy. He made spectacular kid. When they played Navy, he's the guy that saved the game on an awesome. onside kick, jumped on that ball, saved. He's a great guy, great personality. Mom and dad, great people. Just I, Listen, I'm, if I'm you're so going to make it in the pros, you go to Notre Dame, you can make it in special teams. But you gotta be the you gotta throw yourself like you don't give a fuck about he your does. spine he does. or hearing or anything, right? He, That's right. Yeah. Fucking, dude. They just made You wanna be on NBC? <laughs> you gotta fucking come through. You gotta fucking and run and fly and he's, over one. He's taken one more year there. He's working on his PhD there now. He still has they, they let him one year one more year of eligibility. He wants to play again as a special teams guy. You think he's staying until they get some pussy or he's really trying to get a <laughs> They're not lining up for special teams. Hey, 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 you didn't hear that from Gil Carrillo. But for two, for two, for two, for two. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. Person, I said I, I, I'm gonna tell you. They had a T-shirt made. It's, I saw it on the internet today, and he's a special teams guy. Do they still call it the internet? But on the back of the T-shirt, on the front of the, you know, because they <laughs> just won the Gator Bowl or some kind of bowl this weekend, and. So it says, congratulations, champions, Notre Dame. My mom. On the back, it has Irish Notre Dame. And that only allows for it so says, many Dale Yakasaki. And they named, the star. They, named <laughs> they, they named as many letters as it said and by using team members. And wow. Matt Salerno's name is on the back of that shirt for special teams guy. Well, can, can I say That's this a real quick? Guy. So, so I think special teams like... What you saw in Buffalo, Cincinnati the other night, right? Like, yeah. there, there, there comes a moment where you all, we, we all want to disseminate. We, well, we all want to. Was that dude a special teams guy that, that that had the heart attack? No, 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 no. no. He's not. But he's he's out of Pittsburgh, where I'm from, right? And he was drafted out of Pitt and gone to Buffalo. I think 226 uh, uh, draft pick. But that I motherfucker think hasn't seen a sunny day in fucking ten years. <laughs> Fucking Pittsburgh, and they go to Buffalo. Like, God damn! Can we start a war with Cuba? Man, yeah, of course. Shit. Yeah. But I think we we all at the end of the day, like you look for these glimmers of hope. But right. But then, I, I think when you hear these disseminations, you just 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 think, hey, let's just all root for each other, right? So I I, I think like when you hear these stories, like right. the gentleman out of Buffalo, you like you just say, hey man, cheers. I, I I hope you come through. I hope we pull through. No matter what it is, no matter what we're doing with. So I, sure. I don't know. What about um? How do you feel about we were talking about Jerry, Jeremy Rember trying to do something that professionals do, like you know, um, and getting hurt, unfortunately, sure. but also like with a snowplow. Yeah, he got got run over by his own snowplow. 
By the way, that, that's the story nobody's talking about. This guy did his own slow plow. Uh, yeah, and, he, and, and they're not little, they're not like John Deere's where you get the thing. <laughs> hey, let me do it, Grandpa. All right, get in there. This motherfucker's like three wide. And yeah. he's, he's clearing out the streets. But again, what I was telling Gil is that a guy 30 years ago, I was on the roof and he sold me the house, and he's like, are you a roofer? Are you a fucking a handyman? Get down before you hurt yourself and you're not able to do what you do for a living. And man, you're out there in the fucking snow. He's trying to beat sure. the weather, and yeah. he, and he fucking runs. It fucking runs over him, man. An Avenger. It's all a fucking Avenger. He's yeah. not saying ABC take care of this. I'm taking. I got it. it. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, he ran over himself. Like, and I flew. I for mean, <laughs> I flew for. The, I flew for the Avengers in Vietnam. I mean, what the fuck, man? He, no. ran, I over mean, he ran over himself. You don't see that in Huffington Post. He ran over himself, quote unquote. It's a single car, a single <laughs> snowplow accident. <laughs> and his neighbor was a fucking doctor. You know, God bless him, man. But if your neighbor's not a doctor, you're fuck out there. <laughs> it's like your fuck just ran. Fucking, oh, man, too late. He wants to, I mean, uh, he wanted to beat the weather. But you're in but that category, too. The weather too. one. George, don't pretend you're not in that category, too, because you're sneaky. You're you're fucking stealthy. <laughs> Jeremy Renner. We know. I know, man. Jeremy Renner, He's right? fucking yeah. badass, man. Badass Avenger. But I'll take a... Here's the thing. If you put him on a scale, if you put him on a scale, you go don't Ray put, Romano. Don't put me on George a scale. Lopez. You go George Lopez, Ray Romano. You put him on a scale with an Avenger, I, yeah. I would, in this day and age of entertainment... Ten years ago, I go Avenger. This day and age, I go well. Fucking maybe, maybe Lopez, maybe. Wait. Yeah, because I think you're as successful as any of those guys. Because we all, yeah, in the summer. But I play it down. You play it way down. Don't By the I? way, way I do. down. I think you do. I think I you wait. I think yeah. you do. I play it down. Yeah. I find I've never Let's said that. I've never said that before. But I do. I play, well. I, I play it down. You're a piece of shit. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You fucking take advantage of the system. And by the way, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I applaud you. Fuck I applaud it. you. I love so this guys, guy. Mar Lago, 2023. Were you there? <laughs> <laughs> he kissed uh, fucking Trace, fucking some dude's wife on the head. Like, oh, okay. But I will say this. I, I, I swear to God, people, you know, you have these conversations in entertainment. And you go, I think this person might be more successful. <clears throat> I think George Lopez is more successful than Jeremy... Renner. No, I would. I, I would. I, no, I would. I would because a a movie is a is a quick hit. No, it's I, a quick hit. A six figures, seven. I mean, seven. Even but seven. You've even had seven, longevity. But they, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would. I would that. say. I, I, will, I will say this. I'm not rich. I'm not an actor. I get recognized more and asked to take pictures from people who me <laughs> from the George Lopez podcast <laughs> than I do from the. Uh, I don't know, Steve. Documentary. I don't know, dude. Case in point. I don't know. Point. Let, let, Go let's, fuck yourself. Let's, let's see right, your tax you. returns. Um, Piece of shit. Let, let, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> hey, you know, how did you turn uh, The Amazing Jonathan into a fucking Academy Award nominated documentary? Well, I'll, I'll tell you this right now, okay? Real quick, between I the mean, three of us. Yes, sir. You know, I've been out there a long time. Yes. I've, I've seen Jonathan around, and when the I best. saw the documentary, uh, absolutely the best. And all of the awards and all the things, congratulations, man. Well, thank you. But it's also like a testament. I think when you're a comedian, right, you're coming up, you, you look up to the people that you appreciate sure. and, and the people you aspire towards and respect. You go, I, if I could ever kiss the ring. And then this moment in time comes, comes about and you say, I just want to acknowledge that. And you go, why doesn't anybody do a doc about that individual? Then you say, well... This day and age, by the way, this is like four years ago. Uh, I'll do that. And then this day and age, like Man. presently, you could, anybody could do that. Anybody could do a doc about you. You could do it on your phone. About you, about anybody. The, 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 the industry has, is so fractured, niche these days, it does not matter anymore. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I, I really, that's why, like, what, I. What, what was the process of. How did you want to do a documentary? Because you're, 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 you're still doing stand-up. You're still writing. You're doing your own thing. Yes, sir. And it takes a lot of a time to focus on someone else. Yes. And then go through the writing, the preparation, and then shooting it. And then the, you know, it starts to get some attention. It's, a three, it's almost a three and four-year 
fucking ride, right? Well, you need a story, though. You you, you could go, oh, this this gentleman is going to pass. He's he's going to expire. But you also still want to acknowledge, well, what is the story? Do I have a story to tell? If you don't have a story, don't make right. a doc. Right, right, right. And um, there's also credence, right? You, like you want to still like acknowledge like there's people like you, Ray, Romano, uh, Seinfeld. There's people um, that still have this acknowledgement uh, uh, like of gravity where, where you still go, oh, you could build off of that. So mm-hmm. how do you build off of that? And so with Jonathan, the, the build off was, here's a gentleman that came to Vegas that is a headliner mm-hmm. that, um, that is dying. And he's gonna die, and then he die. He 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 knows he's gonna expire, so he withdraws from the scene. But then he comes back for three more shows. It's like, oh well, there's the impetus. There's the uh, draw for uh, a, a documentary, right? So you you do that, and um, if not for the fine folks at All Things Comedy to uh, say, uh, I think we do this. Uh, that's when you do it. But, amazing, fucking amazing. But again. It's not without, I, 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 I don't want to sound too saccharine, George. I swear to God. I don't want to sound no, too- No, I can see, um, I, I see that. I don't want to sound too like um, acknowledging of like people that, like I think this day and age, right now, presently, there are people that are going forward in the world of entertainment and comedy especially that just, they're not- Taking acknowledge of the people, I, I swear to God, yes. the forefathers of people that came before them. When I'm, I'm, I'm gonna agree to that. When I, when I'm coming up, there's still an acknowledgement of of Carson, of Bob Hope, of Dangerfield, of uh, uh, like all these people in late mm-hmm. night talk show, whatever. Like in in terms of the world of comedy, where you acknowledge, you go, thank you, thank you, thank you, and by the way, thank you, George. Thank you, right? All these people that are the conduits of mm-hmm. like pulling the bear of weight to move into this next faction. And so I think you're seeing that with Andrew Schultz. You're seeing that with um, with Rogan, obviously. He's yes. the biggest tent pole. And then all the people under the umbrella of Rogan. But there's people that just before the semblance of Rogan, be- because Rogan's like this precipice of... Um, of you know, podcasting and Bill Burr and Al Magical, et cetera, et cetera. But, but you have this acknowledgement of like a broad schematic of like true talent, you. But does Joe, did Joe Rogan lose some of his nuance in, that, in his podcast deal because he had to take a hard stand on, on politics and, and stuff? And also- um, Well, look at Elon. Look at Elon. Right. What happened with him? Yes. He, he, he was, he was uh, like a conduit of like, uh, he was a beacon of hope. Fucking everybody loved him. Oh my God, he's amazing. Elon and then Musk. the minute he comes out, I, I'm, I'm still slightly... stuck on precipice. Uh, I, no, I know. I'm f- new fucking <laughs> Something like your patio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so her quinceanera is next week. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, like, like Elon. You fucking said it right. Elon is yes. just coming out like oh, I'm slightly conservative. I, I might, yeah. and then everybody comes after him. It's like, but just listen to the vantage point. Listen to his what he's saying, communicating, and it's like it's not the schematics of. I think the schematics of mainstream media, the schematics of um, entertainment, the schematics of how we divulge and appreciate our. Film, entertainment, yes. TV shows, it's so different than when we all came up before right. it was three networks, maybe four yes. or five, and now it's completely, it's so fractured. The LA is different than where we came from. Absolutely. I mean, um, speaking of, this, 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 Johnny Carson is Johnny Carson's uh, Rolex. Shut the fuck up. Are you kidding me? I've heard this story. Yeah, I bought it, um, it came up for sale. Um, a woman that uh, is my wardrobe person knows that I'm a huge comedy fan, and uh, he wore it the first show in 1979. Bo Derek was a, a guest on the show. Are you serious? And he came up, and she's this guy Han, Hans said said to her her, ask George, kind of crazy if he's interested in Johnny Carson's Rolex, and um, she said, you know, he gave. Uh, uh, Alex, who he was married to, gave it uh, to him as a gift. He had it. He wore it for 
from 79 to 92. No. The first time he wore it was... Are you kidding me, George? When he was... Oh, no. George. He was he was introducing... Uh, you'll see it. It's right there. It's right there. On his left. That's... That's that. And he just wore it on Channel 4. Uh, yeah. George, come on. That's Are you it. kidding me? Mm -hmm. That's it. So it came to me and she said, um, do you want to do you want to see it? I said, I said, yeah, I want to see it. If you hold it, you'll feel power. If you'll I feel it, you'll so feel I'm going to tell you something. You'll feel power from it. My last hour special uh, is called The Last Late Night, and it was an homage to The Last Night Talk Show. I started Carson, Dean Martin, uh, Dangerfield, Bob Hope, all the greats back in the day. And I studied their uh, credence, like uh, technicalities, so much that it this means a lot to me. So when you're saying this, like I'm, I'm like Listen, I'm really fucking bowled over, man. So I, it, she she didn't have it. She she said to me, um, "Do you want to see it? Because you know it has to. It, it can't just travel. Like he'll bring it, and I'll meet him at the gate, and he'll give it to me, and yeah. then you'll see it." And I said, "Of course. I mean, I did the Tonight Show in ninety. 91, six months before he left, he was wearing this when I shook his hand. Backstage. Come on, man. <laughs> Can I see it? Honestly, I would I would so take this on like when knowing. I, when I I was in my dressing room, you know, at NBC Universal, across where the tour, where the trams go. Sure. Is the Johnny Carson building. Yeah. So I see it from my couch when I'm working on my scripts. I see a Johnny Carson building. It means everything to me. That's growing up. And... When she takes it out and I hold it like this, I feel this fucking thing go through me, man. Like, like, like through me, almost like a, like a pillar of just straight light go through me and out. And she's like, what do you think? And I'm like, I, I got to take, I got to buy it. I have to buy it. I want it. You know, I want it. I don't, I, I and she's like, Dick Wolf wants to look at it. I'm like, Fuck Dick Wolf. Like. <laughs> I grew up watching <laughs> fucking Johnny Carson. Is, is, Dick Wolf can do the crime scene. So, and he wa he goes, He'll figure it out. He goes, it's yeah. me. It leads like, to me. Fuck Dick Wolf. He's like, <laughs> if George doesn't want it, Dick Wolf wa wants to look at it. I said, <laughs> I mean, the bezel is different. It's in good hands. Listen, man. It's in good hands, boys. It's, a, it's in the That's hands of I'll a say. comedian. It's in good hands. Um, I just started to wear it, by the way. Listen, man. I'm if serious. I take this, I'm going <laughs> to make you, fucking was cry. It Jimmy Fallon? I gave it. I, I showed it on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I yeah. that, I, you feel it? You feel the weight. Fucking a man. You feel the weight. You feel the weight. He was Eddie Murphy and him talked about watches, and Eddie's like, "Yeah, I'm a watch guy." Johnny said, "Yeah, me too." And he's fucking wearing that watch. Johnny, dude, I, I I've seen when he did I uh, the show. when he did Beverly Hills Cop. He I, went on there and he had like a jacket at the thing, and he's like, "You're talking awesome. about watches." And he's like, yeah, I bought it. You know, I got to watch. I watched the television recently. Jimmy yeah. Fallon, the night that he was coming on, they were talking about Lopez versus Lopez. And I told my wife, before he said anything, I said, he's got the watch on. He's got it. And he's going to talk about it. Because he knows what it means to so be can a I tell you this? I, I knew the story, and I know how much it meant to him. And I said, I have to bring it home to New York. When I did this special, right? It, it, so... The last late night. It was an homage to the late night last uh, to the late night talk show. I called it the last late night for a reason because people don't realize like um, uh, like I did the history. I, I did the work. Wow. I, I'm not just doing it just to do it. It's no, like, no, that's no. It's like a, there's a precipice, and, and I want to bring you up because I don't think people really know what you meant to the landscape of late night because mm. I. I really did the work on this. Mm. Um, the late night talk show, um, much like the variety show right. of the 80s, well, we go back to 60s, 70s, 70s uh, yeah, right? Yeah, and it, it dies off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dies off slowly. And then the late night talk show is ours, but it's slowly dying off with streaming. Yeah. And and it, it's a launching pad for comedians. So that's why I called it the last late night. But then I, I think the thing that gets... Everybody talks about, when you talk about late night talk shows, which nobody really truly acknowledges other than like someone like Bill Carter 
or a few right. people Jump that like Carter. comedians that really acknowledge the history. And and, and the I went through alive? and I read through it, and you have a, a one of the more significant parts of it because I would love to hear your perspective on it. I'm going to be as I'm going to be very judgmental and broad and withdraw myself, but. I will say that everything in in my in my research, just from a perspective of like a fan, but also a comedian. Yes. And this is why I really appreciate this moment to get to sit down and talk with you. Yep. And I, you can edit out anything no, you no, want. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I understand. I know where you're going, and I have great uh, great stories. But everything I've. I, I've read and accumulated and researched and appreciated. I, I, I do think that Conan is a, I think he is as much a conduit and appreciative of what the legacy meant to him, right? Right. I think you're, if you look at the, if you look at the history of late night talk shows, the biggest casualty of it all is you and nobody's ever acknowledged the fact that you are the biggest casualty because people can say Conan, uh, Leno, uh, Conan, mm -hmm. you're at the tail end of it because you you were right there and you had a thing, you had something had that was happening, and then everybody fucking disacknowledged it, and then Conan came in and then he did it. He did everything, everything that was communicated to the general public about late night talk shows that was bestowed upon Conan was actually in reality bestowed upon you right. silently. And nobody ever really acknowledged it. And I really believe that why is not anybody ever acknowledged the like the moment in time for you? So I, I just, um, I, I feel very, as a fan of late night, I'm sorry, George, I, I feel like uh, like I, I get angry about it. I'm like, why is not anybody acknowledged what you've been through? <clears throat> um, first of all, the Tonight Show was, and I love you and I respect you Thank as a you. comedian. But I just want to say this before you before you, be, I, I really I really mean that. Yeah. So I'm Thank sorry. You. Good. Um, the Tonight Show was a job that you had for forever. It was like being a made guy. Yes. Dick, Dick Cavett, Jack Parr, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson wasn't going to retire until Jay Lando's manager planted that story. Right. That this was going to be his last year. Yes. And then when NBC didn't come forward and say, wait a minute, that's bullshit. Yeah. Johnny Carson said, wait a minute, you motherfuckers <laughs> haven't come forward and said it's not my last year. That's Hollywood, by the way. That's They're Hollywood. They're just waiting. So Johnny Carson goes to the upfronts in New York. They're still up there. And NBC upfronts. He's the jewel of the upfronts. He's the Tonight Show. He walks out there and he says, I just want everybody to know that May 29th of 92 is going to be my last show. And he fucking walks off. He's wearing this watch. And fucking walks off and goes to Letterman that night. And they make fun of NBC. And they make fun of Jay Leno. And Jay Leno became the guy who had a manager, Helen Kushner, God rest her, whatever the fuck, wherever the fuck she is, that pulled the fucking rug out from Johnny when NBC was waiting to see what that fucking Johnny's like. You motherfuckers don't, aren't going to come out and say this bullshit? Fuck you guys then. There were better choices. Letterman, Gary Shandling, but Jay Leno hid in the closet. I mean, crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. Crazy shit. But also not connective to anything. He's just, a, he's just, no. Nope. He wants the he next had, thing. Had no respect. My question to you is, did Conan, he did not, he was not as, um, not as bad. But, but when Jay Leno went to 10 o'clock, he put things in motion that shouldn't have been there. He should have just went away. But the story, the, 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 the story that was perpetuated in the public, right, was like, Oh, this is what happened to Conan. Conan's a victim, right? right. And then uh, Leno is the, the, the savior because of the metrics, right? But if you go by the metrics, the metrics, the metrics said you yep. were the fucking savior. I was. The metrics we're, we're said going that, direction. that you were the fucking guy mm -hmm. because you created a party atmosphere. That's right. You you were the new Arsenio. Yep. That's you right. were the per you, uh, and I swear to God, I That's like right. I just I. I 
Okay, so I'm sorry. You, so you I, I would even, I mean, we didn't do a desk. I didn't even have cards. I didn't have cards. I had a, I had a monitor maybe at the end of the stage, and it would roll, it would roll and say, you know, ask Steve about growing up in Jersey. And then I would, it, it would, I would look at it, and if I didn't get there, the guy that was working in the in the trailer knew me, and he'd roll up and say Pittsburgh, ask him about Pittsburgh, right? And he fucking, we were, I didn't have an earpiece, I fucking did it all from that, and we wanted That's to do the party, and I, I even said to Jim Paratori, God rest his soul, he was you sat down, did Ellen. you sat down streets, I shut down streets, in Hollywood, and I did a fucking thing, hey, and I said to Jim, I said, hey man. Don't you have to take like a class or some shit like a, you know interviewing class? He goes, "Hey, you're curious, and that's what your strength is. That you're curious. You're a fan. You're curious. You you want to know. And you know what? Uh, they fucked it up when they got rid of me. And Conan never did the numbers that I was doing even when I left. He did all he. This and they what put a fucking hundred million dollars in that fucking thing. This is what infuriates me. As somebody that um, is a fan of the late night talk show uh, community, like as a com the, as, as a comic, had, huh? is that you, Cohen did it, he did it all at the beginning. Yes. He never did it at the end. No. And that's what made me angry, made me furious because I, I'm like a student of it. Like I really appreciate it. I did the work. I'm like, what the fuck? How do you not acknowledge this? The, the, like, so if you're going to acknowledge the beginning, you got to acknowledge yes. the be the end too. You know, because um, your I, ratings were there. Absolutely. I, the first show we 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 did a we did a test show outside by ER about a year and a half before, and I had to do the, my own guess. I got Kaylee Cuoco was a friend of mine from. By Big the way, where's the camera? Where's the camera? This is not, I did not come on here no. <laughs> like talking to George before. I'm sorry. Right. No, no. I really, like, I genuinely like, love and respect you. So to be here, I really take this awesome, as a, um, like, I'm fun. privileged it's, to be it might here. Be a fucking Thank seminar you. that we have going on. I'm here. privileged to be here. So and I'm are you, sorry. Are you Shakira's <laughs> band leader? Are you Shakira's band leader, Chris? I had. I'll shake my head. I had Dane, I had Dane <laughs> Cook. I had okay. Dane Cook. Uh, come out. I had Kaylee Cuoco, I had Eva Longoria, and Sam Jackson. Sure. Wow. And that was my pilot. And then we got picked up, and then we went for the outside look inside, and I had Eva, Kobe Bryant, Ellen popped in, and Carlos Santana. Wow. And those were all my friends, and we were off and running, man. And we were off. And then every day I went to work, and they said, not enough women are watching. Not enough men are watching. Not enough Latinos are watching. Not enough black women are watching. No white people are watching. Too many black people are watching. Jesus Christ. No, too many Latinos are watching. And every day was something that just was like, like you're fucking, somebody has your hand in your pants every fucking day. You can't go in there and just go, hey, boss, great show last Good night. Good show, yeah. Great show. Um. From from the beginning, I mean, incredible moment. Justin Bieber's first late night. I took him to the fucking door and measured his head with a fucking <laughs> marker. And the next time he came back, I measured it again. He fucking grown that. I mean, yeah. just shit that was like. And and the stage was big. Yeah, it was open. It was a party. And I would inter and I would introduce people from the audience from the back. Like Fifty Cent came on with Mark Harmon. And Mark Harmon was a quarterback at UCLA, and 50s across the audience in the fucking window, and Mark Harmon takes his football and fucking throws it, and 50 Cent catches it in the fucking window, and I shoot an arrow at Eric Estrada, the fucking, <laughs> oh my God, man. I mean, it was like, it was on. I it gave, was, I, I mean, still watch them. You still do? Yeah. Oh, on man, TV. amazing, man. It was on because YouTube. I think what Arsenio did was Arsenio, prior to Carson, and I, I will say this. Carson's the best. Carson is the best. The day-to-day -day fucking funny, real, you know, it, what was, he was with uh, Richard Pryor talking about getting, you getting married again. He's like, I don't do it. With and they both repel. <laughs> and they just, yeah, because he, he got married four times. Yeah. And he's like, are you married right now? He goes, no, are you? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. And but there was always like conduits of like, uh, the, and then Arsenio took over, and then you took over, and you had a brief moment in time, and I I don't think the industry ever gave you 
from somebody like an outsider's perspective, this is just no. me. I'm just a comic. I'm just somebody, and I'm 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 rooting in the rings to go. Oh, finally, fucking finally, the it's whites, then it's Latinos, then it's blacks, then it's Asians, mm -hmm. and so you go th by the percentages of like what we all merit or whatever. It's about time Latinos took over and had a voice in this perspective. Listen, I'm ready for you now. And they, they, Steve, that they, that and fucking you had it. That you audience, did it. That fucking audience. There was 750 people in in our fucking audience. 750, because I was used to doing you know fucking theaters. That um, when when fucking Conan came out, he's like, like he, he came to introduce his show, and he goes, "Wait a minute, is this?" All the people, I said, oh, it's going to be full. Every night, every yeah. night. He goes, oh, I could never do this. I ran out. If you remember oh, the beginning of the show, I ran out. Yeah. Like these guys, they introduced the guy, the guy You're walks You're an entertainer. Out there. I fucking ran out there because Mike Tyson said when he started fighting, he ran because he wanted the guy he was fighting to know that he was going to fight right. as fucking fast right. as fucking possible. He's in his corner. Ding, ding. Motherfucker rose and I got that. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to run out there. And I slid through the whole thing. And that was my way of saying, I want them to know that we're going to get down as fast as I can get to that fucking but to X. to George's point, like to George's point, George came up from a cloth of assassins. You're, there, there's people like yourself that come out just like, I'm not, I'm not going to go in the pocket. Look, I yeah. love Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright is a, a fucking fantastic, one of the best comics. Sure. After 15 minutes, yeah, that's true. get me the fuck out of here. That's true. I want to watch you on New Year's Eve. I want to watch you in New York yeah, or New Year's Eve true. in Vegas or Veg like LA. Like I want to watch. There's certain people that are comics, that are entertainers, that that understand showmanship. Even, even Jimmy, even even Jimmy when he came in the, into, even Jimmy when he came into my dressing room when I did this night show and he goes, well, "You've been golfing?" I said, "Oh, I'm over there doing. That's my jam." And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll golf right there, you know, across the thing. He goes, oh, when I come back, we should do a, put a bridge across and cut the chain, the lakeside, go, <laughs> and just easy, because you know it's comic. Exactly, you know, you're yeah. Take over. You know, you're going to take over. But I think there's people that that can do that, and then there's other people that can't do that. There's people that can't, they can't get out of their own way. I think so for me, so I I go do the Tonight Show in New York because of the, you the show. Can I tell you real quick before you finish? I just want to say this to you, okay? From a comedian, from a comics perspective. Like I genuinely, I'm sitting in the pocket. I'm just a comic. I'm just a stand-up comedian. I don't mean shit to anybody, okay? But I know that there's certain people out there in the world, in the ethos, that are just doing the fucking work, that are doing what it takes. And there's reasons you're begotten all these things yeah. along the way with major networks that say, we're gonna invest in this individual. And there's a reason for it. So when I see somebody like George, when I see somebody like XYZ, and you go, I get it now. I, I totally get it. There's people that you can bank on. Right. Like I genuinely- Now you I, feel like I'm connected. I'm still connected. Connected, but <laughs> connected not, not connected to the to Connected to, to, to the industry, to, to the people. To, yeah. to the fucking that's people. Right. That's because right. that's what matters the most. You, Larry the Cable Guy, there's people that just connect and they go, oh, they fucking get it. That's 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 the fucking sauce. That's the difference. That's the sauce that people, the industry does not get. It's like, go ahead, bet on Pearl Jam, but I'm gonna tell you something. Larry the Cable Guy, that's the fucking sauce. Right. That's the people, you have these things where people go, oh, now everybody gets it. That's what we all want. That's the conduit of it all. So my apologies for like striking a little more uh, no, no. aggressive narrative, but I'm just saying I really appreciate this moment in time to sit down with you, but also like there's a reason for it, George. I, yeah, I really you. appreciate it. So. But also, also and fuck you. But hey, also, no, no, seriously. <laughs> ethos and parapets. This motherfucker ethos. <laughs> fuck, I'm learning. This. <laughs> it's educational. Come on, fuck a <laughs> No, but listen, listen, man, I mean, it's like somebody says, Oh, you still do stand up, you know, like you and I just go like, hey man. If you could fly, wouldn't you want to fly for as long as you could fly? Sure. Like, 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 the guy's 24 years old, had a heart attack. If they tell him, hey, man, listen, man, if you go on that field again, you risk dying. Nobody's going to go. Sure. And he's going to, and 24, he's done. 
And guy, Ali, as great as Ali was, as great as anybody's been, that time is the fucking master and <laughs> says, you know, Oscar De La Hoya went before Pacquiao. I went up to the fucking Lake Arrowhead and he said to me in the car, man, he said, George. By the way, I, this is in a Ford Focus. So yeah, is. he goes, when I, when, I, he goes, when I was, and no nylons and shit. This was the fucking one. He goes, hey. He said, when I was young, I'd come up here and I'd run forever. And now it's a job. Like I get up and I don't want to run. And that's when you know that you're fucking, it's not that you don't love it. It's you just had too many mornings, man. So, George, can I ask you this? Yep. You, 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 you've been a headliner because I think there's comedians. Are like, oh, I'm a, uh, I can sell tickets. Don't matter. You're not a headliner. Mm. A headliner means you're, you're resonant, right? You've been a headliner for years. What, um, what's been the difference between perspective of a headliner from when you start? to where you are now, what does a headliner mean to you? Because headliner means nothing to anybody right now. People don't give a fuck about that. Right. But in the comedy community, like Listen, it, it still means something. When, so what does it mean? When you go to the hospital and the receptionist meets you and you say, uh, uh, why are you here? Oh, I have a, a little bit of indigestion. Okay, you move to another room and then it, uh, fucking, uh, uh, a nurse might go in there. And, and what are you here today for? Uh, I have a little bit of uh, indigestion. I'm not feeling really good. Then someone else comes in, and then the doctor comes in and says, what's the problem? Right. I have this. I'm going to check you out. I'm going to get you fixed up. He has all the answers. The right. fucking headliner is the motherfucker that has to go out there. Right. And in that time, make you laugh and make you forget all your other shit and make you realize that you came for the right reason. You came to see a guy sure. who's been doing it a long time. The other guys, ah, oh, 15, 20 minutes, and you come and they were like they were never there. Sure. Okay, Robin Williams, got a friend of mine, loved him. I was telling these guys, I went to APLA at the at the uh at the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And this was in the night early night. I wasn't a headliner or anything. Jennifer Holiday went out there and Let sang. me just say this. You're always a headliner. Well, okay. well, Jennifer, hit Ho Jennifer always, Holiday goes always. out there. Come on, you know it. You know Jennifer what Holiday about. goes out there. <laughs> yeah. Sings one song, Dream Girl, sings another one. That fucking nobody stopped clapping. And she looks over. She's like, did you do another one? And then I, I look at, I was married. I looked at Ann. I go, I wonder who's next. Fucking Robin Williams comes out. But, but that, that's you. But that's but you he because never said, Ken Jung, Ken Jung and I talked when I first moved here. He goes, George Lopez. That's right. He fucking rocked it out. I took him out. And I go, oh, he's a fucking and, and, and that's the point of the headliner. So I don't mean to I don't so mean to cut you off, but he so. went out there and he never said, How about that? He fucking <laughs> went in there and he dug in and in two minutes it was like she was never there. He didn't acknowledge her. Right. He didn't acknowledge that the people wouldn't stop clapping. He went out there, they saw him. It was a shift in the. It's almost like when you see birds go one way and then they fucking and come they back. Go, the yeah. Because <laughs> when, when she left, they were all going this way. And then he walked out and he did the whole thing. You know, he did but the, you did it. The whole grab his nuts and shit. <laughs> and, doing, and all of a sudden you start seeing it come back and you're like. And then two minutes in, I'm sitting yeah. in the fucking amphitheater. It's not there anymore. And I said to Ann, I go, it was like she was never here. He didn't fucking acknowledge and he went into his own shit. Right. He was like, I don't give a fuck. What you just saw, here I am. But that's you. That's DL. That's, that's, that's what that's we do. That's Anthony yeah. Anderson. That's like, there's a new class, and then there's a new class, a new class, a new class. It's always going to be. And also, but also, you know, like, before the fucking internet, yeah. late night was your fucking internet. That was it. That was uh, it. Don Kirshner's rock concert, midnight special, fucking Fridays. Sure. The Tonight Show, all of that shit. Was, you know, we'd, we'd fucking, I would tell my friend, hey man, wake me up at fucking 11.30 so we could watch The Tonight Show. I watched fucking The Tonight Show in all of my friends' houses if I ever stayed over. Like, yeah. I just did. And then here I am, man. Well, Lopez, here's, here's what you, you might respect, is that when I did the special, right, there's ebbs and flows to the to the monologue jokes. Right. Because I researched. I, I watched Johnny. I watched um, 
Bob Hope, Dangerfield, Dean Martin, all all these people. I I talked to Dean Martin's neighbor. That's how sick I got about this shit. But amazing. There's ebbs and flows to the to the monologue jokes in the hour special. So when I when when you hit peaks valleys, all of it, it was like my favorite aspect of the Carson monologue was when a joke bombed. Right. I loved it. I loved it. And so I was like, let's do that. Let's go here and here and here. Do you think they put those things in there on purpose? I don't think they did it, but I did it. So I don't think they did it because I talked to a few of them because I really, I reached out to them, a few of them. I called them. That's how crazy I was about this shit. Are you ready to watch that, Gil? I'm ready to watch anything. That thing is fucking incredible, man. It it, it really, uh, I I think. It's, It's a fucking, it's scientific. It is scientific, but it's scientific to the point for you and me. It's scientific to you and me, not to the viewer. The viewer is going to go, oh, okay. But the, the comedian goes, how do I bat this? I'm Where's a my fucking... I, 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 I just Serious, want to say... Man. Swiss Army Knight, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. I, I, I'm a student of comedians. I, yes. I love them. There's Why are you here? Because of <laughs> He wants to be a comedian. <laughs> the, there, there's nothing better than making people laugh. He wants to play laugh. a skin flute. And, and my... Like my came here one day and you one of fuck with you. the first comedian I ever paid to go see was Dom Carrera. Dom Herrera or Dom Carrera? Dom Carrera. Dom, Dom Carrera. Dom Irera, one of the greatest yes. comics out of Philadelphia. Oh. By the way, I'll tell you this right now. I saw I saw his special, the Young Comedian special, out of Dangerfields. I watched this recently. Mm-hmm. It holds up to this day. To this day, it's still fucking good. It was filmed 27 years yes. ago. Don Herrera yeah. is one of the greatest Maybe comics. Longer, he was. Oh. He, he was. You might be right. He was one of the funniest men I'd ever. As the first guy I ever paid to go see. Yeah. And and I just love comedy. I, and 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 his stuff. Uh, I go nuts. All right. What I about still, Saget, man? Fucking Saget. Uh, Saget. Oh. I met Saget in in seventy nine. By the way, how about you? No, no, no. Yeah, how about? By the way, I George, how about every you? time I talk about George, he's like, I, 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 I met, my ass. Yeah. George, you, you, you. I, I think you sit I in the pocket. To, you, you, you sit in the pocket but, too, be too deep. But I'm telling you, there's been a multitude of people over the years of my years. I, I started in New York. I went to 2004. Then I went out. Where'd you go to New York? Uh, Comedy Cellar was my home base for like six cellar. years. But you ever go to New York? You got to go to the Comedy Cellar, man. All right, the shit. But I'll tell you, over the course of my years, going out, all these years, there's been a multitude of like maybe 10 names I hear over and over again. And you're one of those names in the 10. And I'm telling you, you 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 should take acknowledgement and appreciation of the fact that but you- But do I know her? But you, you did know, something- well, With all due you respect. You did something significant within the sitcom realm, which was always the- um, the invitation to people that did not know comedy. Mm-hmm. It was Tim Allen, it was Seinfeld, it was Roseanne. It was you via Sandra Bullock taking, because uh, I, 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 again, I've uh, done, yeah. but, but also it's just not that Man. introduction. It was you. It was you that did that because people then got to know you. I, I, I would never negate the fact that you did something very important and significant and by the way, for me, as a kid that was sitting there watching sitcoms back in the day going, who the fuck is this person? And I go, oh, he's George Lopez. Who's the fucking George Lopez? And then I, you know, you, you look it up and it's like, wow. oh, this is a person that represents 14% of the fucking American population. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's talking for, and it, like all these other mm-hmm. comedians that I respect, that I love, like I... Um, I could sit here and get emotional about it, but I, I think people don't realize the work that goes into this stuff. It's like I really do appreciate what you've done, Thank you. sir. What you've done. I no, think that I, they, I think they, they, that they, there's a uh, you know I think that there's you know crime, comedy, acting, movies. There's no bottom to it, man. It's a very no, paper thin bottom. There's, there's really believe. no place to land. I started with him on episode eleven. We just dropped last week, this week, number 92, and I've yes. been on all but three of them with him, and I'm still trying to figure out what Where were you in those fucking three? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> in a fucking cowboy rodeo? <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker was in the rodeo, man. He was in the fucking, fucking rodeo. They put nylons on a fucking and, and, bull. And, and, and this and is the crazy nothing, shit. <laughs> nothing has been as much fun. 
fun, has been as educating for me, and it's just it, it's really been uh, it's really been great. You know, I, I do people study it like a like a genre, like they would study foreign films, Fellini. Oh, I think even worse so. I think I mean, even worse so. Yeah, don't you think you're you're. You know Look, what, man, George. I, I, when you're not on the on the golf course, okay. When you're not on the golf course, you piece of shit, okay. But, listen, but do not do not acknowledge. People are dissecting everything these days. I will tell you. 100%. I will tell you. I will tell you this. You know, my friend Ernie, my first friend, uh-huh. God rest his soul. Yes. Yeah. Uh, had a had had on TV in 1979 out here. It turned into HBO. It was called On TV. Yeah. You had a box on your TV. Yeah, of course. I remember, and then yeah. at fucking 10 o'clock, you would turn it on. I couldn't afford it. I remember it. Fucking On TV. And, and he VHSed Richard Pryor li- live in Long Beach. Yes. And he, and he said to me, you have to come over and watch this. And I went over there and we sat in his bedroom on Rinaldi and, and San Bernardino Mission. And he made me a cassette and I came home. And I, I watched that thing 5,000 times my grandma would be like, you're watching that, that, I mean, just forever. Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew him in the 90s. Sure. I knew him in the 2000s. I knew him when he was sick. And I'm responsible for his statue being up in Peoria. Like, it was half done. And I said- Along with Pryor, I by said, the way. I said- we got to finish this fucking statue. And we raised the money. Me, Cedric D.L., Charlie Murphy, God rest of his soul, Mike Epps, and uh, Cedric and fucking, and we did it. And By that way, statue stands. And and I, I don't think you realize is that there's a lot of young comedians out there. And I've heard this a multiple am- amount of times. And again, I'm withdrawing emotion from this, okay, is that, um, there are individuals that look at you, look at you as a conduit to exhibit their future in comedy, exhibit their moment in time to say, hey, I, I, I can still do this too. Mm. And I think that's, that's your moment in time to give to the future. So you're doing it, by the way. Thank you. He is. Thank you. He is. Not also, you. I also, not you. I also, not, 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 not you. You're still trying to but fucking yeah. put yeah. nylons on a fucking steel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy Kimmel hey, but, has that little Mexican guy with him. Fucking Guillermo. <laughs> Guillermo. Get, get fucking Guillermo in here. Get, get Guillermo in here. But also, but also, Steve, like, with the first show, and that was all brand new, I never walked around like I didn't belong in that air. You should have. I might not have, have, have uh, you know, I might not have walked, but when somebody saw me, I didn't. Wa- I didn't walk like I didn't belong. Once should never. You know, have. Like, should never. I have. never fucking. I never fucking was like ashamed of who I was. And we went Why to all those be? Laker games. I still do walk. We did all. Like hey, that. man. I, I, By the way, I, I I think when oh. I look at uh, like uh, someone is um. I want to be very careful when I say this. I want to. Uh, when I look at somebody as the pantheon of late night talk show, right? I go Steve Allen, I go Johnny Carson, and I would honestly say uh, I would go George Lopez because not made. Those people, were a, it was a great two years. <laughs> it was a great two years. But you know what I mean. I think that people don't acknowledge there was a legacy that was passed upon. In the world of late night talk show, so when I when I call this the the last late night talk show, I was not negating um, late night talk show. I, I I did the I, I did the work. I, I I really researched it. I really like gave a shit about it. And you're whether you're acknowledging it or not, which I know you are, but I'm telling to people that don't know. You generally are a huge, significant part of this moment in time that people even right now are not acknowledging, but I am. I'm telling you, you know, George <clears throat> Lopez was an, an, an immense conduit from, if you go from Steve Allen to Johnny Carson to Jay Leno, and I go like this, and then I go 
to Arsenio Hall yes. because he was fractured by the fact that Arsenio was coming in with an... And he got fucked with Letterman moving to CBS. He but lost then the it's you. Then it's you. Then it's you. You're the biggest name to come into play. It's not Conan. It's not Letterman. It's not anybody else. I'm telling you, I swear to God, if you're Bill Carter, if you're anybody, they all know George Lopez is the name that comes in the conversation mm -hmm. and then gets stifled by... Right. Everything, everything that Conan, yeah, Conan yeah. was victimized by, yeah. take all the vi victimization, put it right here with George Lopez. It's not victimization, by the way. It is reality. It yep. is reality going upon George Lopez, and it fucking, like, this is five, six years ago. This is seven years ago. It infuriates me as right. a person uh, that appreciates lightning comedy I mean, and, and also they, comedy. They fucking so, sorry. put so much money in there and cut them down to like half an hour, cut them down to fucking only on the web. Yeah. I, have a, I, have, I have an honest question. I, I don't know the business. It, it, it almost sounds like, was it? The, no, no, no. I, I, I think. It's not premeditated. No, it's I just, just, the think, way I just think the way, if you make, listen, man, it, it, it how many times you go to New York or you go to a store and say, we're closing, the motherfucker stays open. <laughs> Everybody goes in there to see. It, they, that they, were never, they were never vilifying George Lopez. No. But I will say, the biggest victim of the late night wars, before the late night wars uh, concluded, before the late night wars ended, I think before everything hit a precipice, before everything wrapped up, I promise you this, I swear to God, George I Lopez. I press a pistol in my pants right now. That's the third time you've used that <laughs> word. <laughs> George Lopez is the biggest victim of it all. I, I really believe that. You know, I, I, I went, I went uh, out of the country on a three, four day vacation, and Jeff Ross was in the same community. And my manager the best, said to by me, the way. Uh, the best. Oh, oh, uh, who's the one? Which is the one that was Conan's manager? Rick Ross? Oh, there's two of them. Jeff the Ross, the Conan, and then the, 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 the Conan. Yeah. The Conan manager was living in this community. And my manager said, hey, he's having a party tonight. I know. I'm like, I'm not going. Yeah. I'm not going. Don't ask me to go. I don't want to see that dude. I'm here to golf and hang out. I'm not here to to see him or mend the fence. Because I, I feel like that guy was... was purposeful in eliminating my show. But an ally prior to, which is completely An ally different. because, well, also, listen, man, I mean, I spoke to Conan on the phone and told him that TBS was a good place to work, and yeah. I got fucked. Of course. Talked to him, and he says, really? Talked to him on the phone. Told him, come over, man. It's a great place to let you do your thing. That Again, the point. I, I really think you were, that's why I think if you're going to go out with a bang, if you're going to go out and just say, hey, let's acknowledge this moment in time, I think the the best. If you're going to go out with a bang, listen, listen, make George, sure she has big I, like, I'm not saying that's that. True. I'm not saying this to just, I'm not saying this to be an asshole. I'm no, not no. saying this to be like, it's not, no, it's I, I'm fact. not saying this to be here. I could just shut my mouth and go, hey, I, I, I would have left an hour ago. I, I really, I really Parapist believe this. Ago. You did shit. You did shit in the late night scheme. Like people are not acknowledging it. You, you, you did things outside um, the box where you did things on the fucking lot. You did things where you right. incorporated people. You did things where you incorporated your fans. Where like, hey, let's make it a party tonight. Let's really do this shit. Um, let's blow it the fuck out. You did that shit. I, I remember it. I, I still acknowledge it. And I think that you really were one of the last. You were the last. I honestly it just believe like this. there wasn't a structure to it. You're it the just, last late night talk show to have ever existed. I, I, I swear to God, when I say that, because you you brought out the last semblance of a party, right? Uh, amongst people, so people Is would it time so, to bring it back. So people, well, I I hope so. So people would, people would would wait. A couple hours before long ass lines, and I would drive by in my car. I'm like, "What the fuck is that? they do? Oh, that's for the show." Uh, Lenny Kravitz was a guest, and the fr and we always had big dick, big women. dick, big dick, <laughs> incredible fucking women. So I you, couldn't so believe how, <laughs> how many women. Get some nylons to try to tie up. Muy bueno, muy buenos. 
<laughs> hey, so in the commercial, he leans over to me and he goes, is all the women this beautiful every night? I said, I said, Lenny, you see that those girls right there tomorrow, there'll be somebody sitting there finer than them. I mean, <laughs> it really was, uh, I tell you about the salmon story. So I, there was this girl over there and she's wearing like, that, that was pink or salmon. I said to my prop guy, I said, hey, there's a girl over there in salmon, bring her backstage. I go, where? I go, don't look, you know, right there. I go, bring, bring her over here. He goes, all right, all right, chief, you got it. Go back there. He goes, she's in there, boss. I go in there. It's a heavy set girl. She's got like 12 fucking racks of lamb, uh, you know, fucking lamb bones on her yeah. and a plate. And I walk out. I go, hey, how's it going? She goes, you want to meet me? Hang on a second. I go, I go that's pink, <laughs> motherfucker. He goes, that's salmon. I said, ah! <laughs> I go, that's fucking, that's pink. That's salmon. <laughs> it wasn't her. It was a fucking, I don't know where this one came from. She was not pan seared. It's like, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> I got a call at, uh, at 12.15 one night when the show, I was fucking home at 8.30. And it, was, and it goes, I'm sorry to call you. I'm sorry to call you, Mr. Lopez. I'm like, hi. You, I'm, a, I'm the guard at 29 Warner Brothers. Yeah, hey, man, what's up? I'm the night guard. You know, I just I just needed a point of reference. I said, what's going on? Well, Snoop and his guys are still in here. Like, everybody's gone, but they're still in there, and they're playing music, and they're smoking. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. I said, hey, man, just walk away. Fuck. They'll They'll leave. This, I said, just just walk away, man. I'll take I'll take the responsibility. Like, <laughs> just leave them in there. Don't say shit to them. And just just fucking back. He was the only one left on the stage. Other than just they just no. back away and fucking leave them. Oh, you mean a guy guys are having fun? Fucking Get smoking. the fuck out oh, man. or join them. They'll fucking yeah, invite you it was in. Awesome, man. You fucking dipshit. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. And that's the stage you did West Wing. It was fucking awesome, man. I'll tell you this. If I fucking ever do another late show, you're going to be my fucking executive producer, <laughs> motherfucker. I swear to Lopez, God. Lopez, I'm your fucking I Chewbacca. I swear to God, dude. In a heartbeat. Hey, I swear to God. There'd heartbeat. be nobody better than you. Yes. Nobody better than you. Let me be your Guillermo. All right. <laughs> Let's go to Peacock and do it. Let's go to Peacock Let's and fucking do, do this shit. Yeah. By the way, I, I've, I've had nothing but respect because I in um, since my coming to LA. But let me ask here, you a question. Yes, sir. Who... Where, when was the first time you went on stage? Where and how did you get to New York? Two thousand or no? What uh, were you watching with friends? Like what were you watching in your, your friends, friends? Comedians? Not friends. <laughs> but but you, somebody you had to say I'm gonna I'm gonna write some shit. I'm no, gonna go no, somewhere. No 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 no. I, I I literally came out of college. Came out of college. Moved to New York. Said to my mom and dad, my my father's uh, bring, on bring uh, beer back. Lincoln Park. I go. Hey, can I crash out with you? He goes. Yeah. Stay on my couch. I go, okay, great. What do you mean, the band Lincoln Park? No, Lincoln Park over here? <laughs> Lincoln, no, Lincoln Square. Oh, Lincoln Square. The, sorry, by sorry. The, by the okay, okay, great, great. Yeah, he yeah, goes, yes. hey, crash with me. Experience New York. I go, two years, I'm out. He goes, okay. I started wow, 86th man. Street. I walked down Lincoln or down, down Broadway. Every fucking restaurant. And then I go to uh, 50th Broadway. And uh, I go, hey, I'm looking for a job. And this guy, Brian, goes, what do you want to do? I go, I'll do anything. He goes, We'll fill this out. You got a job. I go, okay. Caroline's Comedy Club. Never been to a comedy club. Never been to a comedy show. Never, never like appreciate it. Just grew up watching it. I like, love Eddie Murphy. I love. What about the stairs when you walk in? You have to go down those stairs. Oh, fuck. How great is that? The best. The best, right? They close to them. By the way, I'll tell you this Listen, right now. Listen, man, you go into Caroline's Comedy Club and there's like three tiers of fucking stairs you have to walk down. And it's three almost tiers. like. As a comedian or as a guest? As a, as anybody, uh, as anybody. A, 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 somebody going to the show. You're anybody. excited if you're if you're you're excited if you're a member of the audience, and you're excited if you're fucking a performer because ah. fucking right. And they then go I this go this way, in, you go that way. I do this shit five months, and uh, wow. I two years later, I'm at Dangerfields, and I pulled a comedian aside. I said, "Hey, I uh, I never seen." Caroline's rock as hard as you as you did it. You fucking rocked wow. it out. I worked there. I was. A, he was like, oh okay. He didn't give a fuck. But I'm just saying, just saying to you, to me as a comedian. Now I'm two years in. I'm not a comedian. Who's I that? don't give a fuck. Angel Salazar. I said, Angel, you crushed it. I never heard it louder. And by the way, I'll tell you this right now. 
Angel Salazar. Angel Salazar. Angel Salazar. Caroline. Never heard it. And then I go to. Um, Check it out. Check it out. He had the boombox. And then I go to fucking Montreal, right? And people will shit on me for this. Shit on me for this. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I, I stand by this. Do you give a fuck? They don't I, give a fuck. I give a fuck. They don't <laughs> give a fuck, but I give a fuck. Hey, I he's go, on the precipice of not giving a fuck. <laughs> I go, hey, the loudest I've ever heard it at the Just for Last Festival, which we, which we both know, mm -hmm. Montreal Comedy Festival, the biggest comedy festival of all of them. Of all of them, yeah. Still alive. I'm in the basement. I'm partying. Jimmy, uh, like all these great comedians, like we're all just hanging out, rocking out, fucking having a fucking blast, Get fucking Jameson, all this shit. I go, what the fuck's going on upstairs? Loud, thumping, thumping, thumping. Thump. And then I hear it, thump, 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 thump. I go, what? The? I, I think a, a fire alarm's going off. I think somebody, I think some something bad's happened upstairs. I ran upstairs and then I see people laughing. And it was uh, Gabriel Iglesias. To this day, Fucking the man. hardest I've ever heard people laughing anytime wow. at one show was Gabriel Iglesias. I've told him multiple times, every time we drink. It's amazing. I go, fucking right, I was in a basement and I heard you. I fucking heard wow. you, man. That was, that was uh, one of those surreal moments, like as a comedian where you go, oh, uh, something bad's happened, and then you go up and it's, it, it's wow. not that. It's, wow, it's, that's beautiful. It, it's a surreal experience, right? Fucking and that was that's him. That's beautiful, yeah. In the late 80s, I flew Southwest to all my gigs. Yep. To Dallas, you fucking stopped four times, fucking on the way over. And I was looking at the, the Southwest magazine, and I saw this, this golf course in Ireland. And it looked like the, it looked like the golf course was, was hanging off the earth. And I've been playing golf, but at, at public courses, and I wasn't a member of a, a country club or anything. Fucking right. <laughs> it's in Dude, Ireland. That's the shit. Oh. Yeah. It's called Old Head. We gotta do this. Old Head. We gotta do it together. Look at I that. I tore the I tore the page out of the magazine and I kept the ma I kept the fucking uh, paper in my wallet. Like you know, like a condom. I fucking yeah. pulled it up. <laughs> and Lee Trevino has already been playing, you know. So I wanna join that club. I went there three years ago and the guy was so nice. It says, I said, hey, what do you have to do to be a member? Oh, you, you know, you come over here and get a couple of, uh, you know, recommendations of golfers. Of Trevor Ullman, who's a sportscaster, won the Masters in 2008. And I put Trevino. So Trevino, we met, you know, and we've known each other for 20 years. And Trevino calls me up and he goes, hey, man, I got this call from this guy in Ireland, man. I, I don't know what to say to him, man. He was asking me about you and everything. And, and, and you want, I guess you want to join Ireland? Doesn't make any sense. So here's another poor Guy growing up, and I said, "Hey, Leah, I found this course tore the, you know." I said, "We tear." By the, the way, this one, I put my mic here, and I go, yeah. "I'm going to listen." Okay, and and, <laughs> and I tore the the page out and leave the book. Like you, know, you tear the fucking one page out, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. of a restaurant, the fucking steak you tear. And and he he, you know, would usually would be you know critical, nothing, you know. And then I said, "I need a place to go, man. Like I love it over there." He goes, "I love it over there," and I said, "You know." Fucking starting to play, I never thought I'd feel so comfortable over there as I do in Scotland and Ireland. Yeah. And he's like, son of a bitch, you, you can't even get in this club in Los Angeles. You're going to go to Ireland? I said, exactly. <laughs> like, over there, they, they fucking want me to fucking join over there. Yeah. And with that, you get the exclusivity of playing there as much as you want. They fucking will help you any way you want. I got the letter from the guy. It's it, it's almost like nobody's written me a letter that welcomed me that open ever to anything, man. And I'm gonna join that fucking place. And as soon as my shit's over, my my year's over, I'm gonna go yeah. over there for a month and play golf unlimited. And they you can they'll make tea times. I'm gonna fucking be over there. That's humanity. I think. I. I, I think. Like. Uh, so we obviously got you in. I'm going. Well, I think with two. I'm not. In, I'm not in complete. But you know what? But you know what, man? I mean, I mean, I never thought those guys. But also, 
when I tore that paper out of that magazine on Southwest, it was it was beyond my imagination. Nobody ever told you you could take the whole fucking magazine to free. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> That's how I tore a fucking page. The lady goes, you know, I said, this is a fat bitch. I think, you know, I think some people n- neglect the fact that George came up in a time where uh, Man. It, it, it's not it's not as accepted today as it was back in the day. So, Man, listen, George, man, I mean. I, you take it from here. But I want to ask you, uh, from a comic to comic, like, I respect you. I love you. I've always appreciated, but 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 what is the what what what's the, one of the mar- most arduous situation you found yourself in? Um, well, I think I think I think that you we put up our own obstacles. Like, you know, when Freddie Prince, when Chico and the Man came out in the early '70s, I was like, "Wow, man, this is a guy, light skinned Latino guy, Chico the Man." By the way, charismatic and fucking Huge. gorgeous, fucking gorgeous, beautiful. and and anointed by the industry back in the day when the industry was not anointing. Right, so fucking, they were not doing that back in the day. Lucille Ball went to his funeral, man, and he had problems in New York. Like I think he was bipolar, and he tried to com- commit suicide in New York. And I don't know, man. Like uh, you know, a lot too soon. I mean, nobody gets that hot. I mean, sure, yeah. Fuck, man. I, you know, I actually saw a thing where he does the Tonight Show in '73. Two years later, he's hosting the Tonight Show, but then he was on one time with Johnny, and he wasn't that funny. By the way, by the way, his set was fucking great, and his guest hosting, he was fucking great. Fucking great. So I, I, I know, yeah, but yes, but yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's all in the things. And, and, yeah. and Sammy Davis Jr. was on the first night he was on, and Sammy Davis Jr. was, you know, how he would always laugh real crushing big and, and just yeah. crushing it. So you nail it, but also, I think you know we had the same manager and. He said he was a boy in a man's body. Like he was six ah. two and very attractive, and people thought he had the answers. He looked like a man, but he's really a boy inside. He's like me. So my apologies. So before we embark on this next moment in 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 time, I'm just gonna say this. You were I I again, my apologies, but I, I love you. Okay. I mm-hmm. love you, and I think you're one of the few that were part of a cloth that came into, th- that can acknowledge uh, comedy from here forward to go, uh, this is what it was, this is what it is now. So I, I, I just, I'm just kissing the ring for a second to say, hey man, you fucking did it. Like you really, I just appreciate you. When okay? I, so- when I uh, sold out, uh, I think it was like 22 shows in a row at the amphitheater, the writer of the Daily News, which used to get delivered to my house, wrote about me that I still paid homage to my heroes when I had surpassed those guys. And I was like, I didn't feel like I would surpassed um, uh, those guys at all. <laughs> you know, like to me, I mean, he took, the nu- oh, he took the numbers and stuff like, but I just couldn't acknowledge that I, that I was – anywhere in the neighborhood of those guys. Right. Also, when I used to go to the Laker games when my show was on and they would show Jack, they show all the stars and they would show Jack and they would show me and it would be huge applause. And the guy, uh, Bill Plasky from the LA Times says, I want to do a uh, a story on how you're the new Jack Nicholson. I was like, fuck that. I said, <laughs> we're not, I said, motherfucker. I said, we're not doing that shit. I said, not at all. Fuck you. Yeah. I said, fuck you. We're not, we're not, I'm not touching Jack. Yeah, they're I'm not lo- saying I'm not better that, than Jack. Not only that, they're losing right now. <laughs> so, um, but George, to your, come on, dude. That is that. See, people don't realize like Richard. That picture means so much more to comedians, I think, I know. than. Like you, uh, I mean, but but George, you're that you're you're Richard to me. Like you could think that, right? But boom, boom, boom. It's it's three degrees of separation, <laughs> one degree, and so we all go, oh, Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee is crazy, right? <laughs> but Bobby Lee is the conduit to that generation. Bobby Lee is the conduit to you. 
Oh, dude, come on. The first show I did was with I George did it, and Bobby Lee. That is the shit. Um, By the way, DL is um, not to negate anybody, but DL to me is uh, uh, not only somebody who personifies like show business. Because I saw him at, the, at, at, at an airport three times in LAX. I never walked up to him. I could never walk up to him because it was like, I feel less than. Because no. when I saw him, he was dressed like I was for the show. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's 6 a.m. It's 6 a.m. at the fucking airport. Why are you dressed like this? He dressed like the show was happening in that moment. DL to me is one of my top fives, 100% of all times. I, I fucking love him. Let me go officially on record and saying I love DL. Yes. DL was good, he was good to me. I met him through George. He's just a good man, he watched me, and it, 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 he's, he's a great man. And he really is, man. I mean. Fucking fantastic. He's another, I, I think, I think um, aside from his comedic I ability, think these guys, oh he's just a yes, great person. 100%, hey, yeah. you know, I think these guys, like you, man, I think they're fucking big-hearted guys, man. Like, it has to start somewhere. Sure. Yes. It has to start somewhere that's not on paper, man. Like, you know, I listen, I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of limitations. Like, I think, you know, like, I only really try to perform where it, it's in my strength. You know, there'll be a guy that, fucking Ron Pearson that does audience warm-up, this motherfucker 30 years, and he'll go out there, man, and I would last fucking five minutes, man. Sure, yeah. Like, it's just like everybody can settle into, if you look at, you know, I've been watching a lot of war stuff. Like, everybody would dig. It's almost like these guys are trying to dig trenches where they can survive. Some motherfuckers dig deeper than other guys. Like, I would notice but that, right? To your fucking, point, George, I'm at, the, uh, I'm at a hotel next to the comedy store, and... um and the manager next to the store knows him. He goes, oh, I'll get you a room. I go, okay, give a room. I look up, I wake up today, and I look up and I see George Lopez and- With my daughter? Yes, <laughs> on Lopez, right? And I see that, I go, that's fucking right. Fucking crazy, That's man. fucking right. And I go, that's fucking great. How fucking, that's the dream. That's it right there. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there having a, you know, cup of water, flapjacks, and it comes up every four minutes. I go, how fucking great is that? That is the fucking shit, right? It's like, you did it. You did it in this moment of time. You, in this moment of time, you did it because there's moments in time of, for everybody, for the entertainment industry. There's Babylon, which just fucking bombed. But Babylon was singing in the rain before singing in the rain. And people don't realize that Hollywood is ever evolving. And I want you to you put did your it. number in here, motherfucker. Right. You did it. We did it. We're doing it. We're doing it right now on a podcast. I so. want you to put your number in there because you and I are going to do things together. <laughs> Fuck yeah, buddy. A hundred percent. But I um, no, because without a hey, right, without one in, two don't get in. And I'm I'm telling you, man, the first trip around the sun, I would say. But my first show was was a fucking fluke, you know. It was a fluke. No, it wasn't. No, your first trip around. No, I'll say this right now. It was not a fluke because for Sandra Bullock to <laughs> to invest all her uh, all of yeah. her, she she had moments. And, and 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 now in retrospect, we both know. Okay, we both know because Vince Vaughn bet on me. Sandra Bullock bet on you. So we have moments where we can say, oh, okay, in retrospect, we can say this. But in reality, we know this. Sandra Bullock's bet on you was bigger than mine. She took all of her equity and put it on you. Right. And then you fucking came in. You came through. Not, not only that, yeah. so much so, it's resonant today that it's on a fucking billboard I where I'm in a fucking hotel <laughs> and I go, fucking right. That's a guy that's a stand-up that is only not only somebody I appreciate, but also somebody that is still resident maybe 15 years after his first break. Ended, yeah. 
And somebody took the chance on him. And now you're going to take the chance on X, Y, Z, whatever. But uh, Listen, if that isn't a fucking parapist, nothing is. Listen, my, my, I agree with you. Precipice, motherfucker. Oh, well, 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 but you were at the pilot. Time. Listen, I love my, you. <laughs> listen. <laughs> but, but also, <laughs> but also yeah. you know, um, you know, Mayan, you know, uh, Mayan, you know, Anne was funny. And Mayan's been funny forever. And then, you know, we get divorced and there's the whole mother-father thing. And my therapist says, look at it this way. Mayan chose to be in your profession. Right. She didn't choose to be a producer sure. or someone behind the scenes. So all of a sudden now you have your kid in there. It's not, it's not, it's not Marcella Lucia or right, Louis yeah. Armand that's or right. Constance. It's, it's somebody that's your fucking blood. So any hit to her... It's a hit, and I'm gonna tell you, man. I saw her uh, three nights ago. She came over, and I look at her as a woman, as a comedian, as someone who has paid her dues, and also somebody who has a television show. But they don't give you shows. Like she was the key to Lopez versus Lopez, not me. Her Gen Z life, her issues with me became the show and I became the guy that came through that. Like if, if they weren't digging Mayan, there's no Lopez versus Lopez. And they were digging Mayan. They were like, we we love Mayan, Mayan smart, her answers all are smart. All this fucking Nepo, all this shit, you know, baby, fuck, I'm gonna tell you <laughs> something Nepo right now. baby shit. Where's the fucking camera? Fuck you. It, by the way, it's twice as hard. It's twice, twice as, hard. as hard. For Tony Rock, for your daughter, Anybody to go, oh, it just, it's a layup. It's not a fucking no. layup. It is twice as hard for that individual to, to come up and go, oh, I'm going to do this. I saw it firsthand with Tony Rock. Tony worked three times as hard to establish a name upon himself. It infuriates me. I so know, I think people these days, everybody is looking for an excuse to go, well, I, I'm going to create, create an excuse. It's like, no, create uh, a, a validation for you to uh, have some semblance for success. Don't don't negate the fact that you're creating an example to fail. It's right. so fucking Listen, bullshit. It, it, it works. Me. Tony Rock is fantastic. You never hear of Daryl Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen, man. I could we could talk to you all motherfucking. By night. the way. I fucking love you. I, I love you too, man. I you are you, fucking amazing, Steve. Get you it. really are, it was man. A pleasure. You know, I love you. Listen, it was a pleasure. man. I've never, I've never fucking met anybody that might have watched as much fucking com more comedy than I have. Well, you fucking are totally. I mean, I, I've, I've been through it. I saw Sam. Yeah. I saw Dice. I've been with, I've been with all of them. Landisberg, fucking uh, uh, Dick Vaughn. I've been with all. I fucking John Fox. I've been with all of them. I've seen them all through from 1979, and when I sit with you here, I feel like you're, you know when the Buddhists go over there, go touch the thing, and they spin <laughs> that thing? I feel like it's touch, it's spinning that thing, dude. Well, so, on the, on the real, friend. man. On, and, you, and, I don't, and you don't get that shit from anybody. Fucking right. Love you, Good. boys. Where's the, where's the proper camera? Is it this one? Right no? Yeah. This one. That one. This one? I'm going to tell you something real quick. For those... They go down the annals of fucking late night. Yeah. I promise you this. I promise you this. Do the fucking research. Do the fucking research. And I guarantee you, George Lopez is the fucking king of late night. I, I sat promise with Prince, you that. Man. I sat with Prince. I love you, buddy. I sat with Prince. I'm not joking. And I asked it's him why he show and he said, I just want to know who's going down the annals. I'm fucking with that. <laughs> Two fingers, three fingers, four. four uh, hey, one hand. Four. Hey. The fucking guy. Hey, I said you have a heart attack on the field. Uh. <laughs>